My um, narrativizing mind is very active. It's this invisible frame of reference that you carry in your head. Life presents all sorts of adversity, and some adversity doesn't feel like adversity. It's sneaky. Could I um, sneaky. interview you for my space gas? For my space gas? Yeah, yeah. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> all right. Fucking welcome to Johnstown. The entertainment mecca of Europe. I think um, if you <coughs> put a zero on the one, it would be 10 a.m., but it's 1 p.m. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. You look great. I feel hungover. <laughs> <laughs> no sympathy for the devil. And drinking? Man, you kind of make me want to have a beer. Beer's kind of like food. Do you want a Guinness? It's pretty good. Um, I got this tall coffee right now. Okay. Yeah, I'll have that first. Probably helps me talk. I see you have another Guinness behind you. Yeah, I do. There's two more outside as well, so well, if, you, if you want one, just give us a holler. We can go to the beer store. Hey, need anything? I mean, I'm just looking for the dog. Aye. Did you put her out? Outside. Oh, you did? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Yeah. What are you going to do with your life? <laughs> not drink coffee. Why not? I, I didn't tell you about like the coffee incident in Berlin. Um, I can't remember if that was... Uh, I like looking out this window. Hi! I can't remember <laughs> if that was uh, the incident where you jumped through glass and fucked yourself up at a hostel. Or no. is that... No, no, no. That that, that was that was in, in the Austrian Alps. No, in 1999, I was in a hostel called Fredericks, and I was drinking heavily every day. And I kind of climbed up a post at one stage. I was after taking some ecstasy, and I climbed up a lamp post and fell off it and sprained my ankle. So the next day, I decided I'd detox. Like no drugs, no alcohol, no nothing. How old were you? Uh, what was I, 23, I think? Yeah. Um, yeah, so the the barman from the hostel, this fellow from New Orleans, he said, so you're really not drinking today at all? And I said, no. And he said, uh, would well, you want a, a coffee then? And I went, I can't even stand the smell of coffee. Like, so I, I'd, and he went, you never had coffee? And I went, no. He went, do you want an Italian coffee? And I went, yeah, why not? So he gave me a little espresso, and I drank that, and he, and he said, how do you feel? And I went, exactly the same. And he went, do you want a mug of it? And I went, yeah, okay. So I drank a mug of espresso. Oh, yeah. And then over the next three hours, <coughs> I drank 16 mugs of espresso. 16 mugs of espresso? Of espresso, yeah. Dude, that's far too much caffeine. I went absolutely berserk. A shrink later told me I, I went into an advanced state of mania. Hmm. <clears throat> I couldn't sleep for three nights. I was bouncing off the walls. Yeah, that's an incredible dose of caffeine. So the, the guy was cool. Or did you, you obviously paid for those or were they free? Like, I wouldn't even want to buy that many. Like, No, no he was just kind of seeing... Like, I was a guinea pig, and it was an experiment. So how much can you drink? So I was like, I don't know, I'll have another one. But then, like, by 16, I was like, Ugh! there was all crackles going off in my head, and I started, like, running around in a figure of eight, and I went berserk. I ran out onto the street into a payphone, and I rang at my friend's dad, Shane O'Hanlon's dad. I was like, Andy, I drank 16 bucks of espresso, and I got a fucking bath. I could see into the future. And he was like, you fucking idiot. And I hung up and ran off. Yeah, it was terrifying. Yeah. Absolutely terrifying. Yeah. So th the moral of the story is I never want coffee again. Even the word coffee terrifies me. Well, you had way too much. That's like, if you're unlucky to have maybe like 10 hits of acid and it doesn't go good at all. Actually, I don't think you can have 16 cups of coffee and it go fine. No. I, like, I don't know what I was thinking. I was, that's, and it's not even just coffee cups. It's, uh, mugs. three times to four times stronger if it's espressos. Yeah. Yeah. That's 
insane dosage. Let's do some math here. If uh, one cup of coffee is one espresso and it's 100 milligrams of caffeine, yeah. um, when you have one cup, we're going to call it three, just for low sake, for fun. Yeah. So that's 300 uh, milligrams of caffeine times yeah. 16. Three times 16, third... 30 and then 6 42 4800 milligrams of caffeine <laughs> that sounds about right 4800 or is it 48000 no it's 48 <laughs> it's 4800 which is like if you want to get a fucking ride of a time a decent ride of a time you get 300 milligrams of caffeine just 300 which is just one of those cups yeah that i don't know why like i <laughs> I, you know, I I was it was on the 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 heel end of being in um yeah. Did you hear that? The crackle? Yeah, that I was don't know. the fucking caffeine in me. I think we're all still here. Yeah, guess I could do a camera check. I already hit play, but but sorry, um, what were you saying? Oh, hit record. I already, I already hit record. All right. Uh-huh. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I I was in Holland for for a few months with two of my mates and like taking everything. And I suppose, like, everything back then was, to me, just, like, do it to the extreme. So, yeah, I don't know. I kind of lived a, a dangerous life back then. You know, drinking, like, liters of tequila. Even last night, you've put fucking gravel in your Guinness. <laughs> oh, shit, Jay, I forgot about that. You, okay, so you feel like being, is it some, who's that guy off here in Loathing in Las Vegas? Who's that based off of? Andres Thompson. Andres Thompson is a bit of a wild man. Do you think you're like trying to be as artistically in life as someone like that? Or does it come naturally in your body that you want to just take someone's hand at the bar, put it in their mouth and just bite it as hard as you can? Just like you think of weird (laughs) shit to do in the physical world, (laughs) right? Like that then makes it is art in itself. It's incredibly creative because it's very weird and obscure where people who are stuck in conformity or like uh, a schedule you're not going to do stuff as weird conformity respect levels etiquette things like that where life is totally random and weird i've calmed down a lot though colin i know i mean like uh (sighs) Yeah, I put gravel, but like, it's not like I picked up the gravel to put it. He gave me gravel, so I was like... As a joke, because you wanted his eyeball out of his pocket. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. There's a, he had an eyeball piercing he had in earlier in the night, and then he mentioned to me, he's like, I don't know, I chickened out, man, I'm too embarrassed to have it in, which is so real. So many people would maybe be like, I can't wear this shirt out here, like, I don't look that way, I have to go change. Or this guy, he had an eyeball, eyeball earring, and then, Mm. yeah, it was just chilling, I saw it, I thought it was cool. And then we'd get to the next bar, which is actually a more casual bar than the fancy place we went to, and he took it out, he's like, yeah, I'm just like, too nervous about it, I don't want people to kick me out, I don't look too weird, whatever. So then you knew he had that, you're like, give me the eyeball, and (laughs) he... goes into his pocket he actually had gravel in his pocket probably from some sort of work or some shit <laughs> which is very strange so he Just drops that in your hand gra- yeah and then you fucking what did did he yeah he did say it. he's like yeah you could put it in your guinness just as a fucking great joke yeah you could put gravel in your guinness and then you're just like yeah i'll let's see go. your madness and i'll let's raise go. you uh, yeah C- going back to the hunter s thompson thing do you remember i was telling you the other day that like I had taken a, a a lot of Dremamine pills one time in, in Florida, and I was, like, tripping off my head on them. Dremamine is what again? It's... Motion sickness pills. Right. And they were actually called triptones, which is very strange. Bought them in the chemist, loads of them. And, uh, and yeah, I got chased around the room by this robotic kind of looking, looking bat and chased me down the road. So when... Fear and Loathing, like, I didn't know who Hunter S. Thompson was at this stage, but when Fear and Loathing, the movie, came out, my mate was in Florida, James, the drummer from the band, and he wrote a letter back to me saying, 
I saw this film. Dom, you were born to see this movie. <laughs> so I think there was, I had a tendency to be a bit wild before that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, it, he's definitely an influence on me, Hunter S. Thompson. But I was an acid junkie before I read it, you know, and yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so we talked about this on our last podcast. And by the way, guys, this is two days later, uh, Sunday morning. So, um, you know, there's an attachment to alcohol, especially on weekends. It's a great way to get social, great way to get loose, great way to enjoy a bunch of sugar and alcohol and feel, like, super powerful. But when you feel powerful, <laughs> you will feel the opposite after, no matter what. If it's from a substance, it could be a cocaine, be it whatever. And uh, so we're chilling here. But I did ask in the podcast last time, or it was just within our time hanging out, before you did the acid, were you... So this is a demonstration for uh, the war on drugs and <laughs> acid will make your brain like these scrambled eggs, like yeah. that fucking propaganda. <laughs> um, do you think you had any fucking innate weirdness or like urge to entertain people? Or Oh, hell yeah. Before that? Long before even smoking a dupe. Right. Yeah, I've always been that way inclined. But I'll tell you something. Uh I, I had a brief stint, I mentioned it on the Drunken podcast, that I had a brief stint in, in art college. But um, but while I was there, uh, I did my first acid. While I was in art college, not in the class. I mean, like, socially, at a weekend in the south of Ireland. <clears throat> and I noticed a... <laughs> Aquarium gravel in our fucking throats. Pube. Yeah, <laughs> clearing the, gra the gravel out. Um... But yeah, I noticed the sea change in how I was drawing as soon as I started taking acid. I, the first thing I did after uh, taking acid was draw this thing called Billy Fingerbread. Fingerbread being the, um, my, me and my mate's kind of code name for acid. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you why. Like, you know, kind of when, um, you know, my ma used to go off to Clare or something because she's from the west of Ireland. And my dad would be like, right, we're all having soup. And he'd like, you know, cut the slices of bread into fingers mm -hmm. for dipping into the soup and he called it finger bread and so when I started doing acid and halving white lightnings and stuff I was like oh it's like finger bread so that became the name for it that is funny actually like a piece of toast like a little hit of acid and it, then you're cutting it into fingers for yeah. your homies like into three yeah yeah man you want some more finger bread <laughs> finger bread too great yeah so um fuck what was it oh yeah um, so the first thing I did was this Billy finger bread and it was like Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins, his head splitting open and his head was all blobular by the neck. It was floating. And then there was a bunch of like um, uh, imagery in full color from um, one of his albums all around him. And uh, it was by far my favorite thing I'd ever produced art wise. Art. Fucking hate that word. Love it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you hate it, or I love, I just love the word art too. Like, I don't know. You have a funny relationship with it. In the last two days, you talking about it, you've actually said that you've took time to need to get used to the word art and you doing art, but then also another time when you were sober, you were like, no, I don't even like to identify that I do art. And then so I'm like, you got a lot of issues here with art. Like, <laughs> just like the word art. It's like daddy issues. And dude, anybody, anybody, I just, as a term for people, you're definitely an artist. You make art. I, like, people call me an F. artist. <laughs> art with a capital W. <laughs> Wart. <laughs> Fucking... Capital W. My ward. I don't know why I just thought of like sit on that. That would suck. Sit on a W. <laughs> <laughs> on a Volkswagen Beetle. No, uh, I, uh, I noticed the sea change and I brought it into the tutors. I remember kind of going, oh my God, like this is like, and I, uh, um, and I was drawing parts said, while oh I was God? tripping as well. Or you said, oh my God. I said, oh my goodness, I can't believe I've done this. And I brought it in to them. I thought that to myself and I brought it into the tutors and they were like, yeah, maybe you could, like, turn it into a board game and stick some bubble wrap on it here. And I was like, what the... F I was like, this is bollocks now. I was like, this is the best thing ever. I'm thinking this is the best thing I've ever done. And they're kind of, like, trying to fucking arty it up or something. I don't know what they were thinking. But, like, 
what I saw is like I saw like a guy bring in a tin of dog food, an empty tin of dog food with a toy cat in it, and then said it was ironic and blah blah blah. And he got like good marks for it. And I was like doing this thing that I'd spent three weeks drawing, and they were like, "Meh, we didn't ask you to do that." And I was like, "But it's you got to admit this is a leap from the other stuff that." It, so yeah, that's why I have a crooked relationship with art and yeah. art college and artists. Yeah. Artists being though, like they could be anyone. They could be a statue. They could be a dancer. They could be a me. Yeah, I consider myself an artist. I know, and I'm like drawn to those creative people. I really am. Yeah, it's not like I don't like them. It's just the word I think. Yeah, yeah. A bad stigma and attachment. Yeah, I was trying to make a clear point or an understanding on when there's a establishment that then says you didn't we didn't ask you to do that and like they're the hearsayers it's very trippy when it's creative stuff and art yeah because that's not what art and creativity is about we're never going to create something brand new if you wait for someone to tell you to do it unless they've come up with it in the ether and they're very, very creative at art school, and it's something that they've never done. Not a naked drawing a naked person, not a clay sculpture or anything like that. You true art, true creativity, everything that's ever been invented, there was no book before it, and then no one had an idea of it before it came to existence. Mm. It is has to be beyond the the sculptures of what everyone has done. So then the artists artist teachers that are just saying that's not what we asked you to do or like that's not a part of the guidelines or anything like that you're literally limiting creation and you're limiting the possibility of anything actually actually new a yeah. new invention mm. so then maybe you were feeling instinctually that when they'd fucking block or like yeah they say that this isn't art you literally and lsd can make you connect things in your mind and body to make different senses touch that don't usually to make someone be very different which is also really cool in some respects because it can get you out of your head it can get you seeing things differently yeah a lot of people have not a lot of people but historians and scientists have created things on lsd because it came to them then maybe maybe it would have come to them not on lsd but during the LSD time, they thought out of the box. And the guy who made the the cycles of DNA reading yeah. that they used during COVID-19. Ooh, COVID-19. You <laughs> saved us, cycles, <laughs> the 40 cycles. <laughs> I, you saved us. You're but yeah, that, I, I think I felt stifled in art college because I was launching into a different type of... I, I wasn't painting back then. It was just drawing coloring pencils and that type of thing, ink, you know? So I was launching into something completely different and I was hoping that they were going to encourage that, but they didn't. And so I just started taking the piss out of the place. Yeah, and, because if they're going to set boundaries, then yeah. let me show you how your boundaries look. And I, you know, I didn't need a piece of paper. I didn't need somebody to kind of go, here, this is... Here's the piece of paper saying there's proof that you're good at what you do. You know, my portfolio says that I've been somewhat successful in it. Mm. I mean, like I'm I'm not a wealthy man, but uh, but I've a wealth of experience, mm -hmm. and uh, and I wouldn't change that for the world. But uh, yeah, it's kind of, I f kind of feel like I've done it, and I want to do something else. Yeah. I, like I said to you earlier on in the kitchen, I far prefer um, making music now. It's way more of a passion, having just finished uh, the album with Corners. Yeah. Corners being, well, how'd you come up with the name Corners? And then, but it's a group of guys that you used to trip with and like who are from the local area and you were just longtime friends with? Yeah. Well, I've been mates with like the drummer since primary school. So since it was about like 12. Yep. And the bass player a year later when I went to secondary school. And I, I suppose we saw Nirvana and we were like, we have to make a band. So we just, like Greg said, I'll play bass. I was a guitar. James' brother, older brother, had a drum kit. So he started playing drums and be became a far better drummer than his brother. 
Um, but yeah, the day after the final exams of secondary school, that's when we first jammed. And we did have a band with two other people then, Andy and Denise, and we were called Billy No Mate, the five of us. Uh, and we recorded an album. I haven't showed you any of that stuff. I, I'm proud of it for what it is. It's really lo-fi kind of rock kind of thing. What year? Like 1996? 94 to... Dude, I was born in 1993. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah yeah so you were you were a glint in the milkman's eye when we saw nirvana yeah we didn't have milkmen we had more um <laughs> miners chinese miners creating the uh <laughs> creating the railways across canada origami so yeah um yeah that's, that's I, japanese yeah <laughs> but he, he, we disbanded at some stage in the early 2000s andy was going to move off to new zealand and yeah, people were just, it just seemed like our time as Billy No Mate was done. And so... Um, oh, that was the other band name. That yeah. was the other band name. That was five of us. Right. But it started off as the three people who were in corners. Yeah. When I moved to uh, Dublin after coming back from um, Chesky Crumloff, um, living there for a summer and living, teaching over in Madrid, teaching English, um... I said to Greg, well, I've got some new songs, you know, that I've been writing. And he was like, I've been writing as well. And we decided, like, let's make a band, just the three of us. But it couldn't be Billy Nomi. Because Billy Nomi was a certain thing and a certain mentality. Like, play, we wanted our album to sound like someone was standing in the room with us. So everything was played live without kind of clicks and, you know, and the only overdub was vocals afterwards. But Corners is like a way broader landscape, sonic landscape. Uh, there's loads of overdubbing and synth parts and programmed beats, so stuff that we did, never did in, in Billy No Mate. So, um, yeah, I have no idea. Like, I get lost in the, in the... I go on a tangent and I'm like, I don't know what I was talking well, about. Well, we were talking about you. At, like, I was holding on to a kind of a question and idea and thinking like, Maybe you were always supposed to be an artist and like what made you what makes you like a drawing artist before that? But we were talking about how you switched into being a musician and then while well, I asked you where the name Corners came from, then you kinda we talked about your old bandmates yes. being involved in what was the band name before? Billy No Mate. Yeah. And then <clears throat> you're kinda shaping into the new band. Yeah, Shapes. and Greg had Greg the bass player. He had written a song like he's a mean guitar player. So the two of them are. Um, he had written a song called "Sharing a Corner," and it was a song he wrote in Australia, and it was about how he missed, like sharing the corner of a table in a pub, having a chat over a pint, talking about music. He missed that part of Billy No Mate after it disbanded, and people went off around the world. You know, everyone went, went off traveling after that to different parts. Um, so when we were getting back together and we didn't have a band name, I said, like, well, why don't we have like um, three different band names, depending on who sings, if we're all writing now. So I was going to I wanted my band to be called Normaler and Greg, his band was going to be called Spirit Level. And uh, and James had, uh, hadn't made up a name yet. But I said collectively the whole project could be called Corners, and then uh, and then just that became the name, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what? Because you like making music before, but like it sounds like you've been making music forever too. On, you know, the journey of whatever the heck is going on with your life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like you, you were already a, a musician, but then it just. Well, how did you get sick of drawing then or painting? No, it, it was kind of like, I suppose when I used to travel, I used to travel with an acoustic all the time, wherever yeah. I went. And I'd write uh, tunes on, on the fly. Um, but when I, when I started traveling and painting, uh, I had to, like, there's no way I could bring an art bag and, a, you know, clothes and a backpack and all that and a guitar because my hands were full, you know? Yeah. So 
I had to kind of let that go and and I, you know inevitably I stopped writing tunes then and uh, and since since coming back from Melbourne I've kind of I've, I've it, it ignited this this love of writing music again yeah so I wrote a song of, a few weeks ago I'm not going <laughs> to play anything this time round Jesus yeah, yeah for for those who might have watched the first podcast it was such such a cringeworthy experience for me seeing myself black out yeah man anyway why didn't i black out but i know that you were drinking more because i just didn't yeah i didn't i don't have the i don't think it's the energy source i want to get at the time usually like these days i just really want to drink to really enjoy like high quality beer and or that alcohol experience in beer is really good yeah. too. Like I really like when alcohol is in there too. High quality beer, and then like at a certain point, you kind of my body just wants me to slow down because it doesn't want to get too fucking intoxicated. Right. These days only lately, like in the last month and a half, like it's almost like forcing it down, which is the weirdest thing because usually, or maybe Canada, it's different for me or the. Uh, the gut biome likes it more in Canada, the the yeast balance with the malt and shit. Like, I would just, I want in my mouth <laughs> IPA, different flavors of beer, like, as much as possible right now. Yeah. And then you end up fucking absolutely gassed. <laughs> so that's a different time of my life. Now, now it seems like, yeah, hanging out on the podcast yesterday, I just like, I can't, like, it's like a novelty to have another shot. And be like, you know, let's just go with it here in Ireland with you, yeah. and see where it where I end up. And that was exactly it. I brought all the drinks that I had to the table because I was I thought it would be an inter- interesting experiment to start off. I was re- relatively sober when we started. We had one beer. Yeah, uh, I brought my one beer to the start of it, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I think you had like two. Or you were on your second one when we sat down. Yeah, but by the end, or by uh, maybe three hours in, I was blackout. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought it would be an interesting experiment, but Jesus Christ, I wouldn't want to hang around with that guy that I saw on camera. Yeah. No, um, yeah, it's kind of annoying, I guess. One of the things, me and um, me and your mate there last night, we, we notice the explosive creativity and like going and talking to people and being random and absurd for like, I think you're on like a, a mission of you, you're creating fucking live art just by being alive and trying to, yeah, I'm going to go to these people and open my eye as I push this eyeball out of my mouth. (laughs) Like you're just, and you get, you're genuinely kind of excited about it enough to like leave any conversation or anything and just be like, I got to (laughs) go. And then, so we we recognize that and then we also recognize like well i guess and you recognize it in your buddy too like how blackouts you guys can get and then you're like oh like yeah he can't go to that pub anymore because he got blackout like, yeah so, yeah it's, yeah it's I not mean, fun I, hanging out with blackout people they suck they can't hold a conversation they're mm. fucking rowdy uh now i never get rowdy uh, i've never been an angry drunk oh maybe rowdy has a different word or a different connotation. Like, you're certainly energetic. Oh, sure. Yeah, rowdy, like, loud, ah, energetic, right. yeah, 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 yeah. moving around, fucking touching things, fucking <laughs> ch- chugging things. Breaking things. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I I, I, um, I have mellowed somewhat, though, in you know, the past four or five years, I think. You have. I've seen you nine years ago, and you actually would, when you sat at the bar last night, you would take someone's hand and put it in your mouth and bite on it. You literally did that to me. Did I? Yeah, at the Drunken Monkey, like nine, nine years ago. Wow. Sorry yeah. about that, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was what you got into if you got near dumb. You were wild. Ooh. You were just like explosively, char- not charismatic, like cartoonishly acting like some shit is gonna go down that's just random it might piss you off but oh, then, yeah. then you're just also defusing the situation by getting absolutely weird like you would with the oh, police I've been hit or a anything few times. Like, no doubt yeah yeah you explosive like challenging people's belief systems so much by being like i can just put my hand in your mouth like i'll just <laughs> fucking take your hand or i'll uh, i'll 
make you hear this song on my iPod or whatever, <laughs> like something at a time. Yeah. Hey, man, I thought about it. Um, the next morning, Saturday morning, after we did our drunk podcast Friday night, mm. and I'm sitting there, and I guess what I value is um, when conversations have a certain amount of depth and uh, information uh, that you feel so intrigued that you're learning so much, mm -hmm. that's the most interesting times for me. And to get there, you must dive deep into uh, your craft or you have to put in a bunch of work and when you when we have alcohol it doesn't help us remember yeah so much mm. and so it kind of takes us away from diving into the depths of crafts or conversation yeah and then it really came to me yesterday but i wish i could describe it the best i can but the most it's undeniable like the most actually interesting people to listen to seem to be people who continuously go really deep in their work mm -hmm. and wake up and go yeah because they undoubtedly with our time we spend it drinking or smoking or whatever if you didn't do that with your time and you went further into like just music production and it's a though i wouldn't be able to explain all the music production i would learn but the shit you would go through in pushing yourself in the depths of music production and uh, so you're learning these new things, but to sit there and resist it mm -hmm. and go through that pain instead of like stopping and going and drinking and partying, yeah, that then that stops the cycle of the depths of how far you would go into it and what you would then go through when you push through that fucking doing the hard thing and like continuing the thing that's fucking challenging. Yeah. Then I think the body itself the human being who did that learns a lot of like life lessons and important like ways of speaking and like there has to be a lot of discipline in obsession discipline in obsession yeah i mean like i i know a mural is going to be good if i'm like if i have if i've waited so far out there's something is like i'm kind of going jesus this is going to take ages this is like difficult you know but then i have this feeling that like there's going to be like this overwhelming feeling of self-worth when it's complete. Yeah. And you have to be obsessed to go into that kind of level of detail and stuff, you know, where, where you kind of go, shit, I, I dug a hole for myself with this again, you know? Yeah. But then it feels, you know, self-gratifying. Like I, for me, that's peace of mind. When I complete something, even mixing a song, if it's, we put a fork in it and kind of go, that song's done. There's this like feeling of, I haven't wasted my time on earth. When you've put, when you know you've put the effort in before. Yeah. And you ground your teeth and like, but I think, man, I, in my mind works in funny ways. I have a lot of imagery in my mind and I wish I could almost like draw things out to like maybe remember it and shit. And if I don't, I forget it. But in that process of grinding the teeth, the most like, interesting introspective ideas or like spirit and strength and ability to remember and describe uh becomes like uncanny like mm -hmm. yeah compared to I, and i forget the full reference of why this was like when we podcasted and we were drinking it makes a certain undeniable like we can't get as deep if we were we just didn't drink and then we were trying to be very focused in our work yeah. at, the, at the time yeah it would be it would go a depth in which we could go possibly the deepest we're limiting ourselves from a depth we we are and looking back on the podcast from friday i noticed that that i'm as shallow as a puddle when i'm like that drunk because i can't even complete a thought mm and I'll, I'll opt for making a sound effect if I get stuck. Blah, 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 you know? Yes. And then that uh, that makes less actual creativity in itself. It does. Right? Like it does. Creativity needs depth. It needs intensity. It needs like... It needs focus. Pushback, struggle. Yeah. Stuff like that. It does. And I mean like... Uh, 
yeah when like when it comes to like painting or drawing I cannot do it drunk or hungover I have to be sober I used to get annihilated I used to be tripping off my head on finger bread like drawing and dude by the sounds of your past <laughs> you have had finger bread and drinks beyond like comprehension and even i think that's a world record on coffee consumption i don't know who just drank more coffee than that ever i don't know any one person that he even comes to like people will tell me like maybe nine to twelve cups of coffee something like that jesus which is no dude you had 16 cups of espresso this is three times the amount of these insane amounts of like nine to twelve cups of coffee yeah. where i freaked the fuck out after about like five I, like, I could not even smell it now. Mm. If I even have, a, like, a, a coffee-flavored chocolate sweet, I'd, I think I'd freak out a bit. Right. That's how panicky I feel about coffee. That and spice. Like, spicy food. Aye. You know, you know the last dab from um, um, the YouTube show? No, is it, like, Hot Ones? Hot Ones. Yeah. That's exactly, that's the show. Ah. You know that they're the final hot sauce they have sure I, I drank a slug of that while i was on mushrooms over in oregon uh, yeah 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 yeah. and it, jesus i was glued to the sink for like half an hour trying to uh, like you know run my tongue under the tap yeah um but it gave me a great idea for a mural which i then painted like, <laughs> <laughs> painted this like big one outside the weed store <laughs> Undeni and, I, and I called it the last dab. Undeniably, like, when you go and do weird things, which a lot of people don't do such high levels of substances or even in a certain amount of time in a row, you become and you have done that and you are in that experience. And then ideas for painting and stuff will yeah. be super uniquely you because people would have to walk those shoes to, to ever come up with that. I think so. And I, I it's cliched, but, I mean, like, it, do it, it changes, like, you know, kind of your your trail of thought when you're like uh, if i'm like i completed a wall in the drunken monkey i just completed um uh the neon star star wars mural and i had a blank wall and i didn't know what i was going to do there so i went and i i went and i took a hit of acid that night and then i thought up the the the, the concept while i was tripping what's up with that what's up with the fluidity of i can understand what you're saying sometimes you're not in a fluid state when you want ideas. So like I'm sitting there stuck with my music production program. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I could sample any possible thing from the internet, yeah. any sound anywhere off any movie or any sound effect anywhere. Yeah. Anything you can get on YouTube, fucking anything. Yeah. You can do it, do it people. And then also within the program, there's like synths, drums, there's like every instrument. Yeah. Djembe's, there's uh, xylophones, there's horns there's like and then how am i stuck yeah and then sometimes i'm not saying it's lsd every time but there's something that i have to do or chill out about to then you go i go back and listen and then the fluidity of ideas just pours in like and i'm it, like i could fit a horn right there yeah like I, I hear it in my own brain i could fit a horn right there yeah so but something kick, kick starts your creativity yeah, where you took a hit of acid, and then I'm remembering now, like on substances, mm -hmm. uh, psychedelic ones particularly. Yeah. When I hear a song, you're pretty much every two seconds, I could be like, oh, this could be its own song. And like, if I just took this two seconds, I could actually extract that and I could make a full other song out of this. Like, creativity is exploding. I mean, you were doing brilliant work yesterday in the greenhouse. Yeah, buddy. Even sampling, like, us laughing and talking, and, you know. I was just flowing. It man. was deadly. I wanted to bring that up too because the flow state that I entered and I was trying to tell you about it, yeah. man, I just got cold. So I got in a weird state and wanted to just get inside and stop Yeah. Um, after like an hour and 45 minutes or something or two. But the flow state I was in was so, I, it was so intense yeah. that uh, I just teleported through time and it was I amazing. wrote like five tracks. Yeah. You know, you know, I looked at them this morning. Like, I mean, I just didn't let myself stop. And I said, nothing is bad because I kind of took a thing from you. And this is what art is in a way. Like, and it's against those teachers. Like anything you're creating is okay. Why are you limiting yourself? Like what? Yeah. Why is this bad? And then, so I would say, this is good, 
But then I'm like, what would I add to this? If this was, this is good here. And all it was like a kick drum and a snare with a big reverb and then like a voice. And I'm like, but don't be mean and don't say like, don't stop. Don't, don't stop. Keep doing what you're doing. But how can I make this even better now? Like yeah. don't, because when I judge it and say it's bad, then I start putting up walls and saying why it's bad. It's not perfectly mixed. It's not perfectly sounding mastered. And then it makes more walls and then it makes the creative flow stop. Yeah. Well, I mean, like the good thing about yesterday was like both of us understood what we were there to do. You were going to have to spend the initial part of each mix finding your feet, you know, and then like, you know, kind of like finding the beat in there or whatever you were doing with the sample whatever or whatever the hell I was what, doing. whatever you were doing but then like I was kind of like painting in the same way so it was a jam it was really interesting I've never done anything like that yeah where music and painting were starting both with a blank canvas yeah and then kind of whatever sounds you were doing was influencing the way I would paint them yeah and vice versa the only uh, the only thing I felt that was like, wasn't blank Mm. on your end which was you already kind of had an idea that you wanted like the base to have like ocean in a way sure but i actually threw that out the window then i i was started to, to go with those colors but then i completely went uh, way off the chart from that dope yeah. yeah and i bet you use different uh drawing techniques and stuff then. exactly yeah because like you know kind of i saw you went pretty freaking creative yeah you art. you were being like so experimental i thought like if I, if this is a jam i have to do the same you know what's crazy i because you were there and i felt like i was accountable i was accountable to making the listening pleasure <laughs> accountable accountable okay f accountable f for listening pleasure for you yeah so i was like i have to keep going i have to believe that this is a song and i have to feel it confidently yeah. that this is a song now and then but and keep it making it better yeah and then it would yeah it just then i would have oh, and then i fuck it was incredible god damn you, <laughs> you creative do, do you nuts. still do you still have those yes yeah save them and Great. i looked at them this morning yeah yeah they're uh, i would love they're kinda to cool. hear them again at some stage well um when the the youtube video is out too it'll be a really fun listen for you oh, i'm right, sure yeah it'll be like, on youtube it'll be it'll be like a mixtape it's very i actually believe that it's it was when I listen to the song start to finish now, yeah, it's not as special as when it was being created live. It couldn't possibly be though. Because of the experience. It's like you were hearing it grow. Mm -hmm. Now it's all finished in a way. It's not finished. I wouldn't want to like release these finished and say like that's a finished listening project mm -hmm. from zero to one. But yeah. when it was being created, it actually made more sense. Yeah. Because I had to add things at the time within the loop um to then make it progress at that time and then i had to lock it in and move it later so that when the loop came back it didn't just start again it had to build up again and yeah. stuff like that and so the whole listening experience of it 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 was more like a 12 minute track not the two minutes things that it is now mm -hmm. it was a it was a 14 minute session of it's recorded. I don't even have that recording. You know what I mean? It's a song that is recorded in the recording. Yeah. So that's going to be really cool. I only have and can only play um, a finished bunch of dabbles of fucking paint and stuff that's on the wall. Yeah. Hmm. It's almost like I have the, the painting and you see it and you can dissect how it was made, but you fucking can't because you don't know what time you put white on versus what time you put red on mm -hmm. when it's fully recorded we get to watch your process and then you get to watch my process of how those ending pieces are there yeah and they during it's kind that of fascinating during the process of music creation it's beautiful along the way yeah because you're and i guess even painting i like music more than painting like i get less stimulation from watching someone paint lines except for if I'm on psychedelics, mm -hmm. watching someone paint a line can be like you're watching a river happening, a river movie or something happening, and yeah. then that's entered, that's stimulating enough for me to like watch the flow of it. But the music flow is, it's vibrations happening 
at the time, like a river in itself, like a vibrating river. Um, and then you start chucking rocks in that river, which are kick drums and shit. Yeah, if if you if you're if you're adding um, sounds into a track that you're creating, do you visualize those? Do you see them as like? Do you see that sound as a river? Do you hear that crash as like water splashing? Fuck into? me, man, dude. Artists are also different and stuff. I am um, I'm very visualized with my music. Yeah, like when I hear music, yeah. uh, it does put images in my head of sure. what it it takes me to places. And that's what I found so cool. That's one of the reasons why I, I have reinforced the idea that I haven't read books and uh, I just make up reasons and things. But every time I could have grabbed a book, I was either looking for music, mm, listening to music or making music. Right. And that takes so much time. Yeah. Um, and whereas people would grab a book and they like it because it makes them go to a different place. Yeah. Whereas music for me, I'd listen to a song Same and here. then it's just now I used to read a lot, but I don't anymore. Must be why I like Unfortunately. world music too. Because world music I just feel like suddenly I don't even shut my eyes. I just listen and I even just look at the name of it and then I just hear it and then I'm suddenly in this Sahara desert with a tribe of taliban yeah and it's a bit scary but i'm on their team and shit and we're gonna right. go fucking do some shit jesus and then or yeah i'm coasting on some sort of future lo-fi hip-hop song and it feels like i'm a cloud going over a mountain deadly well, fucking what is going on <laughs> what made <clears throat> my body be like that yeah or is everybody like that but i think people are in different degrees extremities i think everybody has ex uh, relative feelings mm -hmm. but people have them in more extremities yeah here's one like some people can't go out because they have too much like air quotes empathy mm -hmm. empathy is feeling for someone else sure um and that's why we don't want to make people feel bad mm -hmm. because we actually feel pain ourselves everything's in our own reality yeah it actually hurts us so we don't want to hurt them but some people they have so much empathy when they watch someone chew food. It feels like they have food in their mouth and they feel like it's unconditionally like they don't have control on their empathy meter. It's so high. Yeah. That they feel for people. Mm. And now it feels like you're in two bodies at the same time and it fucks them up. Yeah. They, they as they have food in their mouths, they feel like they're choking on food where they're Jesus. just walking down a street or yeah. they're they feel like they're and their sensory organs can't handle it so that when they see people they have so much empathy that it's intertwining with their identity of themselves too much so they kind of just reside indoors and try to just they're just pulsing magnetically so like anybody who comes in it feels like they're them more in yeah. a way like and you could get that shit from a psychedelic trip <laughs> you can, yeah. I mean, would you consider yourself an, an, an empath? Um, so I actually do think I might um, want the well-being of people to be really good, or I have a really hard time making any situation uh, intensely... I don't know, like, I almost am satisfying the children in people all the time. Yeah. And satisfying the children is, like, letting them have candy all the time, or, like, yeah... But I can tell you're an empathic person by the way you do like these kind of one minute like kind of selfie videos. You're kind of like, you know, a video blog kind of diary type thing. And you kind of like, you know, the way you talk about other people or your experience or how you're relating to them. Yeah, I can tell that like, you know, kind of you do want the best for people. I'd like to think but I'm others do something like that. Others do too, right? That's what I'm saying on yeah. a certain level. But then it makes... I mean, most people I know... I have, have good moral standards, I suppose. Um, I mean, if someone's a bit, a bit of a cunt, you don't really want to hang out with them, you know? Or or drunk like me. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so that's a, that's a super um, trippy one. Mm. Alcohol and being empathetic or like... So what happens is we enjoy it ourselves. And it doesn't harm anyone, but then it also makes us feel like we're doing things right or yeah. it lowers our 
sense of ourselves therefore well your inhibitions go to zero when you're drunk inhibitions and sense of self and then if you lower sense of self you lower sense of empathy mm. because empathy as we talked about before is a feeling of ourself yeah. when you have empathy loved ones you have more empathy for empathy being the feeling of their pain and stuff and yeah. they're not doing well your mom you feel it so that's why you want to take action sure but if you are drunk uh, or drinking makes you feel you less. Mm. So then on the road of it, so we start, we feel good when we're doing it, but then it also cuts off our feeling to ourselves. So we become less stressed about our own shit, and then we also become less empathetic to others. Then we, but we feel less stress ourselves, and we become less empathetic to others, and that's exactly a drunk cunt. Yeah. isn't it because they're not empathetic to what other when other people are talking or yeah, things like that exactly. but they feel good yeah it's a weird trip and it's it a is. very it's a mind fuck to navigate and it can be very hard to and we don't i don't think anyone really likes who they are drunk i don't think anyone is like flourishing when they are drunk yeah but it's a it's literally a the one of the hardest trips to understand. There's a golden hour window <laughs> from when you tell like, me it, buddy. When you <laughs> when you're a few drinks in and you're like, you know, you're the best. You've slow. You've taken a little bit of your edge off. Of, yeah, you're your best version of yourself. I think just in that golden hour, and then Usain you, Bolt wouldn't say that when he's running. <laughs> uh, I don't think he's running like having a couple beers before he's running. You know running what I mean? Like he stole a Or TV. someone writing a test. I don't That's think racist. they're having a couple beers. <laughs> so what are we talking about? Where it's a couple beers is good when for what situation? I, I think like just like uh, uh, on a social. Uh, I mean, like if everyone else is kind of having a drink, but then it they're, they're like like that podcast from friday showed me it after that then i'm not the best version of myself at all yeah you see it right i saw it yeah and it was it was kind of horrible i've never seen myself black out i and i saw it and i was like shit i wouldn't really want to hang around with that guy what a blessing that uh Jesus. we were we on had that, that note i'm just gonna grab a, a, a guinness do you want one i um i do okay <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back <laughs> My goodness, dude. It, it's a different podcast to Friday. Sure, yeah, yeah that's nice. nice. That's nice to be sober. It is. Yeah, yeah, it's a different kettle of fish altogether from Friday, isn't it? You see, I think that this one, even though the other one's an interesting experiment in what what is a a blackout, what does a blackout podcast look like? I think this is a this is a much better one. This is one I wouldn't mind actually kind of sending a a link to a mate. The other one, send them both. I don't know, man. Oh, yeah, like, it's not 
it's why yeah why would you want to send them a drunken podcast when you have a less drunken one or something like a more casual one where you're more adequately speaking of yourself and showing so exactly isn't that a representation of life itself it is they're, they're, why I mean, would you want to represent yourself as a wasted guy and exactly. that is day-to-day life a podcast is a recording and it's there like until an emp goes off but yourself is you ever to everyone else all the time yeah so why would you want to represent yourself like that any other time yeah i know i know what i mean yeah i I, unfortunately i've got a a kind of an addictive personality and you know is there tears coming to your eye a little bit on the right don't go changing don't go don't go changing i don't know that song i don't have, (laughs) have a sip of water yeah, no, it's it, it. Look, everyone, I think, in a way, for, with social media, you know, kind of pre- presents themselves as something, but it's not like the, you know, there's a dark side to every moon, you know. I think like, um, no, was, no, but <laughs> <laughs> not me, bed no. But the, you know, people will say, oh, this is the life, and you know, photo their feet on the beach or whatever, and you I know, got some thoughts about that. Okay, but um, hi. See, see, here's the pro. Well, you fucking shook <laughs> I'm mine. I'm good at drinking. You shook mine before, while I wasn't here. Yeah, yeah, you did. I knew it. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you and your family. I got a vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. What were I'm you saying about you. social media? Um, no, I mean, like, like you kind of go, hey. Isn't life great? And here, this is my cheers. life. And cheers, man. Slunch. Slunch. Um, but yeah, of course, like, you know, kind of, it's, it, you know, people, you, you see somebody kind of saying, oh, I had such a great time here. And, you know. At a bar. Ha- hang, at, at a bar, hanging out with people, walking around Old Town with an Iranian girl, whatever it is. Um, but nobody... You don't. You never tell people about like, Jesus. Like I really struggled with Shit, the winter parents. and de- 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 depression and stuff like that. You know, you don't just don't present that to people. I do. I I want to try. Do you? I do. About depression? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because I, if we uh, if we live the lie, or if we live like we're in social media, or we live like we're all that. Uh, all the time we're living like kind of two lives it's very difficult we're kind of lying i don't i don't think it's a lie i think it's more like um it's just you don't want to air your dirty laundry like you know in public if we don't how are we ever going to learn about it well if this is the good thing about having good friends people you can talk to on all sorts of levels Uh, i'm fortunate enough to have people in my life that i can actually speak openly about depression and stuff like that and i can kind of like you know they'll usually give me like you know some encouraging words and kind of remind you that you're kind of a a decent person to have around you know so uh don't go changing it's not efficient to go to work and then think your boss is going to be the person to do that because you're not there at work to talk about how depressed you are like, I was thinking, I do and want to try, tell people exactly how I feel when they ask me how I am. Right. And what's going on. Because it's so, it's the truth. And yeah. it's more of the truth. The more people can see truth and understand what is going on. Yeah. The more people can actually navigate this world correctly. So, today, how are you exactly? I'm I'm actually glad my throat doesn't hurt as much as right. yesterday, which is amazing mm-hmm. through drinking and things like that. I'm feeling less irritable than yesterday. And then a, a way of asking this is uh, how are you mind, body and soul? Yeah. Yeah. So how I, that's your physically you're feeling good. My mind feels my mind feels fine because uh, we've been really pro- productive. Well, well, actually, so mind and creative. might be like versus soul. Yeah. I'll say my soul, my energetic soul, and like it's a little bit attacked based on my own um, 
not attacked. You didn't attack me. I sacrificed my own kind of beliefs in drinking Uh a bit Mm -hmm. where I'm on this edge or a tipping point of change or it's affecting my physical too much, which then attacks the mind, which then attacks kind of the soul in general. But I feel fulfilled because we've done so much productive work. Exactly, yeah. Which has been... The, the blessing that saved it all. I think we might have maybe been down on ourselves if we hadn't done. Oh, like I, I would have thought it was a, a massive wasted opportunity to pro- procrastinate about doing these things and then just not follow through. That's horrible. Yeah. Like I was saying to you yesterday, it's, it's, it's great to kind of like speak about these things on the phone a few weeks back and then to actually go and do them. Like <laughs> when I woke up today... I didn't particularly want to do a podcast. Yeah, I wanted me to too, actually. hibernate and watch a movie or something. You me know too. I mean? But I got up and I was like, no, nah, why not? It'd be predictable to go kind of say, oh, I'm hungover, I don't want to do it. Nah, let's let's follow through on what we said we'd do. Yeah. And and therein lies the, the gratification and feeling of self-worth when you actually do stuff you said you'd do. You know, instead of kind of, uh, yeah, <laughs> saying, hey, why don't we do this, but just not do it. I, like, and, and again, this is down to the company you keep. If you're with people who follow through on what they say, you kind of don't want to let them down. Just like I don't want to let anyone down by smoking cigarettes again, because I've said I'm never doing it again. So I want to be good to my word, you know? Yeah, sometimes we're not flawless with our word, and then we just also let that slide some people yeah yeah um we no one's perfect no one is perfect there's so much fuckery in this world yo Mm -hmm. god damn it why did the the nazis turn to nazis man they were regular people thinking they were doing the right thing and i think i could have probably been swayed into doing something like that too because you don't like jews (laughs) 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 nah Nah, I don't really hold any grudges against any people. Yeah. The only people I'm confused about or scared about are uh, maybe the folks of, like, Al-Qaeda. Yeah. They um, seem to, if you don't join them, they will kill you. So then I'm like, shit, should I kill them? And I don't know if that's I could. It, but do, do you, like, that's just an incredible, like, anyone who's kind of, like, you know, white supremacist, racist, <laughs> it's just an incredible waste of this one shot that you have at being on earth and to do something positive and bring a little bit of color into people's lives. And, you know, it's just such a waste to spend it angry with other people. Yeah. You said, uh, like, so any kind of person that is a little bit angry, like you said, white supremacist earlier, just, yeah, that was an example. Like, yeah. Right. White supremacists, they're, uh, people who are white in color and they think they're the bomb. So then they're racist to other skin colors? White yeah. supremacists, the supreme white, they think. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I suppose it's like I've I've always been really conscious about mortality since I was a teenager. Thinking like, you know, kind of... From the acid? Um, Possibly. Plus, maybe a bit, yeah. But I mean, like... Like, there's a tombstone and it says, here lies this person, this date to this date. There's a, And that dash there, that's your life, you know? And to try and make the most of that dash, you know? Dude, I really felt it recently. Um, so, my mind and body and soul right now, the body, I know I could work out a little more. I've been um, lagging on it yeah. in the last week. I've been probably like five days off. That ain't... That's not two days off or three days off. <laughs> That's five days off. Uh, where I'd been kind of going every day before, but did, which is really good. Did you did you expect like to kind of like lose a, a little bit of the healthy routine coming here? I think you must have. I certainly did. Yeah, I'm on a, a wave of being a little more gentle because I might have been overtraining, and the only reason I might be overtraining is my brother mentioned it. It's mm-hmm. you're doing the same thing, but you're slowing down. So you're not resting enough to then get the amount of rest to do the distance in one hour um, to then 
another time strive to do it quicker than an hour. What's happening is the distance is turning into an hour and 10 minutes, an hour and 15 minutes, yeah. the same distance. Yeah, yeah. So you're killing yourself like by, or you're sick. Mm-hmm. Like you're not resting enough. Something's slowing you down. You're so like, don't try to do such a thing as quick yeah. anymore. Like, drop the distance or something for a bit whatever um shit why did i bring that up i was talking about last because week I th- sacrifice I think, of exercise yeah like the last few days i mean you came here and you were doing your stretches and stuff like that and some push-ups and that type of thing but i yeah i kind of knew that we we would inevitably have a bit of a session while we were doing all this mm. which is a kind of a a, f- a fun way to let things unfold again it's about inhibitions but that can be like that can influence what i painted yesterday with you while you were djing <clears throat> but i think now even though i thought i was going to be starting off <clears throat> um the background to a certain painting it took on a new life and what i think now is i'll actually complete that as something more abstract and just buy a new piece of M- mdf and prime it for the thing I was going to paint. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you're going another way with that, that art. You did suddenly go live. I did. And I like, you know, it, it kind of, it took a left turn because the, the music influenced me to, to go with you and jam with you. Sick. Yeah. So I'll complete that as something like, that's why I was asking about the, the, the tracks from yesterday earlier on. Yeah. I'd like to actually listen to those while I paint it again. Yeah. I'll need to, uh, get them from the the only place those will be will be the screen recording on my computer and then right. it will be actually like it yeah. sounded but uh going back to i remember what it, where i was where i was at with uh the hell I, kick yeah i i knew that i i'd be okay i am i'm in good shape and then now i'm gonna be in good shape to get back into just normal again in mm-hmm. a way like try to for like three days four days straight five days straight yeah and then take it take some fucking break yeah for two days or a day um and then bringing that up uh talking to my brother in that same time or like two days later and we were talking nana uh joel the twin oh right yeah i haven't talked to lanky pete for a while he's uh pretty fucking quiet yeah to our family right now lanky pete all right but uh yeah no i don't think there's any wrongdoings but i think that he doesn't want to talk digitally right now to anybody right okay just the way but we were talking about mind body and soul and then fucking last week dude i was horribly darkly fucking two days only two days lucky for me or whatever or why the hell did this happen but i actually talked to a friend that said a certain star sign was in a place and everyone kind of maybe felt or very many people on this planet felt the same thing which is interesting Uh if i could mark the date i'd say it but i'm not going to depression or what Oh yeah, just not any energy to to strive, and it's like I forgot all the great ideas, and then I talked to my twin brother, and yeah. the 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 fucking changing point was him talking about. He's like, you know what I respect, man, or what I really like is athletes in the gym. Um, when I'm in the gym, and there's an athlete there, there's an aura or a total energetic change in the gym. Mm -hmm. Um, I hope I say this right, but people, other people are kind of just in there, just going through the motions, getting Uh it done. Yeah. Uh, not, not exactly striving as much as my interpretation of him talking about this person in the gym. I was thinking about like a rowing team girl who's on the fucking machine rowing harder than anybody. Yeah. This is a human being pushing a boundary for what? To try to explore limitations to try to push oneself to try to grow Uh and that is literally contagious that energy is being pushed that is it's happening in the room right in front of you i wish i had that in me i really do and it's motivating you to do something well this is where this is where it applied to me is i like i love that energy Mm. i want to be that energy yeah and i remembered that yeah and that's where i don't know maybe people like me or maybe people i believe get some sort of excitement sometimes through seeing me was 
what I try to do is illuminate them. Yeah. I try to do things yeah, to a certain see that, yeah. level mm-hmm. at the time. And even speaking, uh, even being just su- being surprising, being gifting, or uh, I want people to feel inspired and uplifted. And then for some reason in my dark fucking time where I'm just standing all day, not fucking doing anything and i'm like avoiding watching things because i'm like no i can't watch things that would be a waste then i'm like i'm not even taking out the trash i'm not even exercising i'm not even writing music i'm not even talking to anybody like and do do you sorry do you feel like bad when you have off days do you feel like that's the a waste of time like i mean like i think last year most of it will like it's not that like i wasn't creating it's just that i had a, i suppose i i'm on the tail end of a massive depression that's lasted years since i came back from from uh australia basically you know a broken heart will do that to you and it, it time is the only thing that you can hope will mend it that it'll just get easier or you you'll accept the emotional scars that you're going to have to carry them you know um and because that kind of zaps and you know bleaches out your creativity in a way uh like i i haven't wanted to really paint much at all in the last two years i i what I what I created in Australia the paintings in Oregon and that I was like super chuffed with with all them but I just haven't had I haven't felt that drive it's like my purpose in life has kind of altered and I'm hoping that like whenever I feel fully good about myself again and the broken heart kind of subsides that like the drive to paint and that kind of thing will come back to me you know so yesterday was great because it was a chance to do something where there was no kind of, you know, kind of, ta-da, this is the end where I signed my name. It was like just about the jam. Yeah. Which was freeing. Yeah. yeah. Which is where a lot of work gets done. Yeah. Like if you're actually in motion and doing things, like sure. the jam. The yeah. Beatles went to where, like Russia or something, and they jammed for like four years. Yeah. Or two, and then they jammed every day. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't Russia, but. India as well they went to, but I can't remember what what's what. But they jammed every well, Paul day. Paul McCartney was definitely back in the USSR. And then they, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they got wicked good. By and the way, I've never bit someone I didn't like. Yeah, well, at the time, <laughs> I remember some people not liking me, maybe because I was they caught the wrong side of me, which was trying to be super glue a lot. Which I mentioned this two days ago. I was like in the ego of super glue a lot uh-huh yeah trying to be as cool as the dj super glue in the day-to-day life but unfortunately the, the, some people are just begrudgers <clears throat> they don't like to see someone doing well i yep. love to see everybody excelling and winning I smell bullshit i know <laughs> i like i i want that for everyone i'd love to see everyone like I, i'm super proud of like um my youngest brother al that's like the lead lighting engineer for Riverdance just after touring China and he's about to tour Australia with them. Sick. Yeah. So that's, that's ob- obsession so that's, his, about his craft. That's close to mm-hmm. you, like brothers. Um, I still feel some grudges or I still feel like I wish they don't deserve that. I wish I was that. Or um, that's, it's bad. It's not productive for me. And it's, it is literally happening, but you. But like, um, being envious of someone else's accomplishments is one thing. But I'm talking about like, um, just wanting everyone to to win, to to strive to be as whatever they're doing, to be as good at that as they possibly can be. Yeah, because everyone. That's better for society. Yeah, society. I. I don't. Um, I don't necessarily want people not to be well, so that's Ooh. a true fact. Yeah. Um, but I certainly, when some people are doing well, I'm like, why are they doing so well compared to me? And then that's, um, not a really good productive no, but that's, use of it, time. It's human condition. 
So you've got to give yourself a little bit of slack, you know? I think it's always me that makes the huff and puff into the mic. I don't think it's you. But yeah. Like, I think it's just my breathing habits are running right into this mic. But, yeah, that mic really, it's got a guard on it and stuff. But human condition. Yeah. Wanting, or like. I think you can't beat yourself up too much. Like, you know, you could accept that you're like you're flawed and everyone is flawed. So you just kind of go. This kind oh. of brings us back to when we're sad in the in the days, and then do we feel like it's productive? When you ask me that, and I do not think it's productive, and I do think there's something that causes the issue. Yeah, in a way. Mm-hmm. But it's weird because I didn't solve anything in particular in Belfast, Ireland last week. I didn't change any circumstance. Actually, I just heard a story, and it reminded me of what another thing we brought up, and why I brought this up in the first place, which was limited fucking days on the planet. Yeah. And what am I doing here? Scary. And I want it's now the time to do that thing that I love to do, which is be inspiring. Yeah. Fucking take people by surprise, so that it changes their perspective. Isn't that the best? So that they can, they can think differently and get themselves out of dirty traps or habits or like they can have a different view um and i remember i was in this conversation i was kind of bringing it up and feeling better with my twin within fucking 15 minutes like and that's amazing that you've got that the thought pattern like was going up and up and then you sleep and you get up and you're just still in the thought pattern of like remembering all the shit you could do Mm -hmm. and you're like that'll be inspiring that'll be cool that'll be crazy people will probably look to that and be like wow that's cool you did that or like nice job or i can see you're working that makes me want to go work yeah but i thought about some people in the conversation with my twin bro um who wouldn't find things that i do can uh inspiring right some people they'll just have different ideas of what is cool or what it like they won't be like they won't see the appreciation of going up to a random group of strangers and asking them what what's up and how are you and would you guys like to come join us like they maybe don't even give a shit about the i don't know nerves that it would take to go do that in a foreign country or something yeah because there was a guy that did that over in tbilisi just like there a couple of weeks ago and it was over in tbilisi we were sitting outside a uh, a bar and we were having some beers it was about like six of us or something and this dude just rocked up out of nowhere and he just said, uh, hey, you look like fun people. Can I sit with you? Of course. Uh, Armour or something his name was. We started calling him MC Hammer anyway. <laughs> but like he hung out with us. Then we went to a different barn. Like, you know, he spent the And we were howling laughing together. And he said it was the best night you ever had. Cool. Yeah. Well, he brought great. it upon himself. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. I love that. I, I, I you know. Uh, I've I've done this because I've been traveling alone so much with the painting gig. You kind of have to make your 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 own fun happen. If you don't, if you're not really proactive and kind of like, you know, talking to strangers and stuff, you're dead in the water. Fucking goes out to everyone. Yeah. Anywhere in any office job, like you want more people to talk to you at the office. Yeah. Why don't you talk to them? How, well, why would they talk to you? They know nothing about you. They I, don't. You're really quiet around them because you're just shy and nervous. It's not because you're being mean. You're literally just shy and nervous. And then people don't want to talk to you because they're like, that person's kind of uncomfortable or like they have something against me because they never said hey to me. Yeah, Where, yeah. Like some weird, confusing stuff like that could happen. I mean, the way I would uh, approach it, I'd walk into the reception or like, you know, or the you know common room or I've whatever i heard this story before it say would, it, did say i it, say, say this it. uh dude i think i remember it from like nine years ago <clears throat> but i'd i'd say who wants to get drunk like who wants to like go to a bar with me is there another way you'd say it like i'd say um, no who i'd say do you want to do you want to tell people online you're having a good time or do you want to have a good time yeah i remember you saying that that's yeah. that's what i'd say and people more more than um often than not would fold away their phones and their laptops and we'd all go to the bar and just have fun you know yeah so yeah i think like the point i was making was if you're traveling alone and you end up like you know kind of in a town in the alps you have to speak to people it can't all be about like doing the work 
there has to be an adventure invo- involved in it as well. So to be a vagabond is to talk to strangers. <clears throat> it's like we uh, we didn't even fucking smoke and we got rasp. Yeah, What's I think it's. On? I don't know. I think it was the gravel. My sore, <laughs> <laughs> my sore throat. Sore throat. Uh, is going away every time I cough it away, which is dope. I love that feeling. It's like Hork and Alugi, but you had a soreness there before, but then it's <laughs> it's getting not sore as soon as I Hork Alugi. It's so much more rewarding. <laughs> Hork Alugi. Um, yeah, I don't know if we need to talk about who we need to inspire or like... I could think that I'm not going to inspire people, and that's actually a negative thought. That would make me not... That, the, that kind of thinking actually puts me into a loop of not wanting to try doing things because then I'm thinking about the people who won't enjoy it, like getting up to go perform and then thinking about the people who won't enjoy my music. That's how that's not going to help motivate me to go Yeah. rather than going up to perform with all the anxieties that you feel or excitement in your stomach. Think about all the people who are going to, enjoy it. I guarantee you do inspire people, dude. I <sighs> do. Yeah. 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 I'm in some case to say it. it. I can't um I can't. I'm not bothered by it or something. And no, I could I... be even well, I'm trying to strive to be stronger and better and even more air quotes inspiring and stuff. But no, people actually voice it and it's maybe because they're uh old partners or uh family members and stuff who have heard me say it and maybe they're telling (laughs) this is exactly the kind of shit the second guessing that you don't need to do in your life um they heard me say it so they know it'll make me feel good so they're saying it and then i'm interpreting it like that like yeah they're only saying it because they know that's what i'm (laughs) aiming for or some shit like you can't think that (laughs) fucking way you just fuck it shape your own reality think what you Shape your own reality by your own thoughts. Yeah. Believe that they do think you're inspiring. I, I, I saw it. Uh, there was a short cartoon <laughs> I saw about 20 years ago on the TV, and there had a beautiful line in it. And I can't, don't know what the cartoon was or anything now, but like the line was, life is a film without you. It's a different film. And I just thought that was beautiful. That like you take one person away from anything and reality completely changes for everyone else you know yeah add to that person everything changes again you know so yeah i'd like to think that like you know anyone like has that 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 amount of worth you know that I, everyone has a, a kind of a, a the same level of, a, of importance i fucking judge others man i um i know and i want to believe No, hold on. What am I saying? I'm saying that I, sometimes others tick me off or I think they're a bit useless in sort of circular patterns that they may do that may be self-destructive or harmful to others. And then I'm like, that person in their actions and doing that are worth less than me. Then I think that might be fucking super dangerous. I try to rid that thought because I'm like, I would be like them if I But if someone is being a cunt, then like... It's okay to, to to not like that. Yeah. Yeah, but I try to just... I'll avoid it, is what I do. I don't actively not like it. I actually change my mind and try to be like, no, man, I could be in their shoes. I am only me because of what I've been lucky enough to be me. Whatever the... F- Dude, I was born and gifted with a fucking great body that mm. works. Fucking others might not have had all their limbs. Sure. I just met Super someone, fortunate. Just met someone two days ago. Yeah. Um, so then if I... And they're my parents. And if they were... If they had my parents and all that. Like, if I had their parents, I'd be kind of probably a cunt like them. So then i try to even it out and be like, okay, I could just easily be them. So... But they're being a cunt. And they're self-destructive. And I can't do anything about it right now. So I'm going to just leave. Mm. Or I'm just going to stop supporting that person as equally because yeah. I can only support so many people. So I may as well support people that I believe are in cycles of growth. Mm-hmm. Therefore either growth to others or themselves. Therefore kind of raising the sea waters of well being for everybody. Yeah. Rather than supporting a 
a black hole. Yeah. Like supporting a cycle of a black hole. Of well, unfortunately, there are just some people, like, you know, and they could even be friends. Like, you know, it, it, it just knowing them isn't good for you. You know, I, I have very rarely had to, like, block someone I knew and, you know, leave them out of my life. But it has happened. But, like, it, it would have to be for very good reason. You know, w wishing death upon me or something like that. I just kind of go, ah, I don't need that at all. Yeah. Bleached everywhere. Never hear from them again. Good. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, if there's something like that. But, I mean, yeah, like I said earlier, I'm kind of fortunate enough to know a lot of really good people. Being empathetic enough or, like, being an empath, I feel like I could hold on to those kinds of people maybe too long. Or like, right. Yeah, just giving them chances. Second, get like just being so empathetic to being like, well, if I was in their shoes, I bet I would do that to myself. Mm. And then you're just sitting with someone being kind of a dick to you. Yeah. Where, man, I don't know if you've ever been in these times in your life, and I bet you have. Remember when you're surrounded by people, which you're like, you're like my brother or my sister or something. You're so alike me and I have so much fun with you and I'm so comfortable with you and sharing with you feels like I'm sharing a family. Yeah. Hanging out with those people is the fucking shit. Yeah. And versus that person that you're like thinking empathetically enough to just tolerate them. Yeah. It's so weird because I want those people to be well, more well. Or I could just fucking fuck them off and I could chill with people who I literally will have babies with. Like, <laughs> I fucking love you. Yeah. Or like, yeah, if you just did, if I had to choose between your life or mine, like, fuck, just be simpler to take, give you life because I, I wouldn't want to live without knowing that it, I had the choice. It's, it's so strange. I got a lift off a, a girl, um, about a week ago, uh, after I'd been to the Klimt Immersive Light exhibition, and I'd stayed at my mate's house, and I was waiting for a bus <coughs> on the motorway, and this girl, whom I hadn't seen in 30 years, I used to be in her class in school, just kind of like called me from her car and said, I'll give you a lift. And uh, and she was there, geez, I've seen your kind of like life on Facebook over the past decade or whatever, and uh, you know, it's amazing, like, you know, I've got a boring blah, 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 like, you know, and I was like, well, no, like, you know, you've got, like, a family, you've got, like, stability and love there, something that I don't have. No matter what, like, you, you do, you're looking at, from the outside in, at someone else's life, kind of going, I wish I had that. People will kind of see, like, me as, like, someone who's traveled and painted, which was great, it was a great life. Um, and still is. I don't think I'm done by any means. Um, but like everyone has a tendency to look at someone else's life and kind of go, shit, I wish I had that, you know. I like where I am, but like, I think I would feel a little bit more complete if I had <clears throat> like a girl by my side kind of per permanently, you know, love. Nothing's permanent. Nothing's permanent. But, I mean, you know, and I, it's weird to say that because then you see people who you thought were, like, like tailor-made for each other. You see them married and for years and years, and then you see them split up, and you're kind of, like, wondering, Jesus, like, you know, is anything solid? Dude, we were born in this planet alone, and we're going to die alone? Jesus it's yeah. It's a Sunday, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we got to, hey, we got to run to church, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, Sunday. Um, <laughs> sorry to say that, guys, but you got to undeniably think it's true. I don't know, man. I'm uh, trying to date eh, always, right? I, the idea of someone by your side, but I, I always rid the idea of someone by my side for a long time or yeah. any sort of that thought. Yeah. I can't. I can't be real with it. I can't imagine it. And then it kind of self-destructs the romantic aspect or idea of some long-term relationships. Mm. And hear me out. But yeah. I know some people, they they won't see you unless it's going to be long-term. Mm -hmm. And it's like everything, we don't, our lives are not solid. Mm -hmm. 
the relationship with our own life is not solid. Mm-hmm. How can I promise you a, a solid relationship? Like, and it's either 100% certainty or I can give you percentages. I can start breaking this down in percentages, how much I like you and how much I think I'll be around you. As of now, 60%. Like, what do you want to hear? I can never say 100 because 100 doesn't exist because I believe that any of us can be lost at any time. Hold on. And that all being said, everything we do with the relationship of our life is going to end. So why why not enter a relationship because it's going to end? Your life is going to end. What are you waiting for? I don't know. I, I mean, like, look, <laughs> I I used to kind of think more or less the same way for the longest time. Uh, I went out with girls. I, I there was definite like love there shared, but it, like I I never really thought I was going to stay with them, like past a certain amount of time. I thought like. It's great that we're together now, but like I'm going to move on. And I'm going to do something different. And That's how it always is in... And then I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I, no, no. it's how it always is in life. Yeah. It's great that we're here now. That's literally life itself. Yeah. Every moment you get to take another breath. And then so when you bring a relationship into it, why is the promise something different? Why it is only happening now. Yeah. And it's always going to be limited it's always going to end it is every relationship with your mother with your your lover forever your lover forever nope that's a that's a made-up idea and uh my parents divorced i promised to love you for I, a while i had the worst the worst till death do us part yeah yeah to that three. but look here's the thing what changed for me then was um was was Getting with a girl where... Uh, I'll keep the light on me for now, but uh, we should get the light oh, back on. Oh, right, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, Can you hold that thought? I'll hold the thought, yeah. <laughs> Clapperboard? Yeah. Yeah. What's new, pussycat? Whoa, whoa, whoa. We should do a, a a bit of a beer run as well. Get a couple of Guinness and some tequila. Nah, money am only But uh, yeah, <laughs> these these work on your projects. these Guinness are kind of they're they're going down well. I have to say. Remember the dark side. Remember how powerful the dark side is. Something, something dark side. Something, something complete. Whoa, whoa, Jesus, it's bright, isn't it? Is it brighter than it was? I, I think so. Well, I, I suppose the other one would have lagged a bit at the end. No, I'd say no. Keep it, keep it up. I'd say, yeah. Keep the brightness oh, just, up. Um, it dies faster. It oh dies right, faster. yeah, yeah. No, thirty percent. All right. Is that that's fucking bright, isn't it? It's good. It's doing its stuff. Yeah. yeah We're doing its thing. Right. We're back. Um. Yeah, we were really deep in it. I'm sorry. I just wanted to get that light on to get a better front image for uh, the folks listening and stuff. Oh, shit. I'll look at the camera. Make sure it's running, too. Oh, yeah. Tell me about the love. Can you get back into exactly where you thought you were? I am. Yeah, yeah. I've held it. Cool. <clears throat> Thank so, you. So, um, wh- what changed then was finally finding a girl that I did want to have a future with and I could see myself staying with them and moving to a country just to facilitate that romance I always thought I would just keep on traveling until I found the right person 
and then she would have it would be a love so strong that like having her as my family would mean I'd be okay with leaving everything in Ireland and even Europe behind you know um <clears throat> Wait, that's not the case with the person? No, but it, it, the thing is... Um, you found someone that you... I did, and and that's gone, but... Because it, it ended, because they didn't feel that same way. No, they did, it's just that... Well, there was complications. Anyway, the thing is, like, um, once you find that kind of companionship and, and love and that kind of feeling, like... Yes, we're a team and we're such a good team. And, you know, other people can see that, like, you know, wow. Like like I said, like Taylor made kind of thing, you know. Um once you've kind of gone there, then it's impossible for me personally, it's impossible not to want to find that again. But it took like forty five years for me to find that. Maybe. I'll be 90 by the time I find an, my next girlfriend. With that attitude is what I said <laughs> last night. Yeah, What exactly about do. running into another person that's like that? And then they don't feel the same way. But, like, it's simply an idea that you hold. Mm -hmm. And then we can't be... We can't forget that it's an idea that we hold. And we can't then entitle others to feel that same idea is what I try to... And it's kind of gross because it makes me not commit very strongly because I'm like open to understanding that they don't feel the same way as me mm. and anything can change at any time. So I just coast and be like, fuck yeah, I love you. And I think we should have a life together. But what does that actually look like right now? If it looks like us just traveling, getting really intoxicated. And then I feel this feeling of we could, um, have a partnership and, um, have a house together um it's not happening the house isn't happening there's no plans happening towards it mm -hmm. i'm living in a fucking fantasy yeah unless i take act like i've actively tried to take action in it and stuff then what's happening maybe <clears throat> is this other person isn't on board with it and they're in denial of it and we're just coasting and she's not actually letting me know where i'm actively maybe trying to be like yeah let's this has never happened, by the way. Yeah, I've yeah, not yeah. actively hypotheticals. That's okay. I'm not actively done. I've not actively been ready, and I'm still not. And I've kind of talked about it till I was 30. Now that I'm 30, I'm like it's more like 35. That I'm not actually. I believe in my body. I'm not trying to settle because I'm trying to gain as m a lot of experiences. Mm -hmm. Be free. Be yeah. with a lot of people. Yeah. Being with people is amazing learning for being with other people. Yeah. Makes more compassion. Everyone you're with. And when I was 30, I was doing the same thing. It was I, great. Yeah. That so it didn't change. take you 45 years because you weren't open to it. I, no, it I was open. It won't take you 45 years. I was open to the possibility I just never found the right person. I had to travel to the other side of the globe to find her. I've been kind of... I got like three to four women in my mind who have dated that I'm like when I'm 35 or 36 like I'm gonna actually be like let's hey how are you in life where are you at would you do, try and rekindle do. something absolutely wow they're my because I haven't burnt the bridges I so I believe yeah. though they can date other people and I'm open to that sacrifice mm -hmm. that I could never date them again uh -huh. and I I've just been within my own body that I know that I'm not ready to settle down and start a house or anything. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. like, and you, you should be doing what you're doing now. You should be because like, once you kind of like feel like you've got that out of your system, then you, you might be ready to yeah. settle down. Yeah. And then I'm always like, Oh man, unfortunately, God, I'm hard to date. And I'm probably pretty vague because when it comes to a really direct answer of, I am not going to pursue a long-term relationship with... I cannot commit to pursuing a long-term relationship with you. Mm -hmm. uh, with, and it's already been a few months and we've been sleeping with each other. Like, it's not what people want to hear. It's not yeah, what everyone wants to hear. It's, so it's really hard to say. And it's really hard to date when you're like that. Unless you find someone who's kind of like non-monogamous -monogam uh -huh. and um, and they're super easy going with like you know I mean I don't think monogamy would work for me at all 
So I have to find like someone who's okay with like, you know, me sleeping with other girls and open relationships. Yeah. I mean like and or something. You know, whatever yeah. it's called. Yeah. Like, and the weird thing is like being with someone like that, it doesn't mean you're looking for other people to sleep with. It just means if you want to, it's okay. You yeah. Know? There's rules around it and stuff. Yeah. I mean depending like depending on the couple. I, I do believe that there are like I can I'm open to the possibility of finding someone else um who I can share that same kind of love with. It's just so incredibly rare for me to want to actually think of someone in terms of I would leave everything behind just for you. That's how special you are. So that's an idea, right? Mm -hmm. Let me, I'm not an expert at all, but it's an idea that you have. Yeah. But it might not even be the right idea in reality. So maybe, hold up. Like, maybe not. Is this track, so I can have an idea of a track that I make and I'm like, yeah, man, this is the absolute shit and this is uh, gonna be a banger and stuff and i just waiting for it to be a banger. Uh, the way the world responds, like we have to be analytical and visual and perceptive of how things are beyond our emotions and what we want to then be like, it's actually not performing like a banger. Yeah. And it doesn't seem to be. Yeah. And these other ones, though I thought they aren't, are. Right. <laughs> so if I want the house, this banger back here in yeah. the past <laughs> is... Did you just call your ex a banger? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. a sweet analogy. My, yeah, yeah, it? yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Literally we have to be in a, we can a get banger. we can get lost in our one way, but the world mm -hmm. truly decides. Like I'm gonna run through this poison ivy and not get stung. Yeah. It's my idea. And I can do it. And fuck, sometimes it does. The world shows up and the poison ivy didn't sting you. And you built the house with the person. And it only shows up when it actually does. We have to be like half analytical of what's really happening with our lives. Yeah. Kind of like, yo, I'm, I'm, I have the feeling that I want to settle with this person. And then we're just traveling around Europe drinking because so it's not happening. The thing yeah. that I'm imagining. So I'm actually living a fantasy, a lie like yeah. a, in a way. Or you can just go double down and be like, yeah, dude, she's going to come around. <laughs> Yeah. Shit, we're doing it, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Eight years goes by, and she never had the guts to tell you that she wouldn't ever, but she never had, you were still having enough fun for her to stay around, and she never was going to, and then it just lasted eight years instead of four. Yeah. But it's always worth trying and failing rather than kind of saying, geez, I wonder. Like, I follow someone over to Istanbul and kind of, you know, follow my heart because my brain doesn't really work well anymore. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I, I am a, a kind of a diehard romantic, I think. Sweet. And, uh, you know, I would have no problem changing everything just for one person if I felt that l love was going to kind of last. And then would that really benefit? Like, what I is think it? What is it that we... But it, but as I say, it's worth trying. Yeah. It can fail, but everyone wants to try if they find something special. And everything is really... We don't know how it is until you try. And everything is really... There's always a paradox of... it. I don't know. I could be living a different life. Though I finally settled with this girl, I could have settled with another girl or... Not sure what I'm saying. It's uh, no, just life I, I, just plays I get, I get out what you're saying. as well, and so crazy having two people in our minds. And dude, all these people that I imagine are like the way my mind works is the four girls that I imagine that I would like start a family with or have kids with. Yeah. Though I'm not saying all four are, all four could be in total rejection of it immediately, mm -hmm. and I'm just open to that. They're just ideas. They're just trying. Yeah. But I'm lucky that, and kind of like we talked about yesterday, the, they're my, my highs. They're yeah. my, they're my peaks. Yeah. They're my, yeah. But then over the time, dude, I've left those peaks based on my own ideas of being like, and I'm, I worry to bits that I'm gonna never be able to have what 
if I just stayed here and invested with you, what is in my mind? Yeah. About it and like the future. But I'm like, eh, nope. Like, this is amazing, but I think I'll be better if I leave this amazingness now to struggle more <laughs> mm. and learn more and do whatever more, try to be with others more, to try to level it up higher. The bar, the but bars you know that, that I have, I'm even like trying to get a higher bar with someone to then <laughs> like leave them to then try to get another high bar to then at a certain point be like, hey, these are my bars. This is where I'm at. Yeah. Anyway, who's up? What are we doing here, baby? But you know that FOMO you're speaking about that kind of like you're with this person and you can't help but wonder what would my life life had uh, how would it would have turned out how would it have turned out yes sir had i stayed with this girl yeah <clears throat> you see that that's the thing about finding whom you deem to be the right one for you you kind of go this is the most fun i've ever had with somebody there is no other kind of like i'm not wondering about anyone else because like for me i have found the person who makes me laugh the most and encourages me to be better and healthier and you know everything like that yeah so that's the bar and it's impossibly high now i'm fucked <laughs> like I, I i i can you know play kissy face with another girl but i'm kind of like thinking about that other girl not thinking about the other girl while i'm playing kissy face nothing like am. that but like i'm i'm kind of that's where i'm at yeah, you're, you, I'm kind of f fucked until I, until I um, truly move on. I suppose I don't know if I have yet, which um, is a terrible thing to say. You're making me feel for my last partner. Like yeah. she sounds like uh, you, right? In a way. Yeah. Yeah, like she sounds. Uh, love you. <laughs> yeah. Um, she found her partner. So she would quote, yeah, uh, just yeah. She still has feelings for you, though. Uh, in reality, right now we're not partners, mm -hmm. so we're not we're not partners right now. So to say you found your partner, like I'm so lucky to have someone feel that way about me, and mm -hmm. I don't want to just like coast them along. Yeah, and hold yeah, them. yeah, yeah. That's ho that would be horrific. No. No, no. Yeah, it's and I believe fair. I've, and it's so hard to be so truthful to sacrifice having someone feel that way for you, but you have to, you have to uh, definitely tell them the absolute truth of mm -hmm. the direction. Yeah, yeah. You're making me think about that person and uh, the way they feel, and yeah. then what they have to do to get through it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know either. So there's think, no, there's no kind of like handbook to direct you through you know such a weird experience of kind of harboring feelings for someone when you know it's impossible and unreciprocated and yeah it's just um it's 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 a it's a shitty way to be but i i'm tr i'm trying to bide my time and think right i want to get this 2d designs clothing kind of thing off the ground focus on doing that and hopefully change like the direction of my career and just become a happier person with myself travel again i'd probably start painting again if i was kind of like happy with fuck it <laughs> may as well start painting again and start windsurfing fuck that yeah no um <laughs> you know just be happier and like i think like because yeah when when you're you're happy with yourself then you know then love can then flourish with someone else okay so uh without lsd without lsd right now we're gonna try to um fix your mind oh jesus yeah here we good go good luck man you're gonna need what we're a lot gonna of do classes. is um we're gonna imagine who could and how you could um top the the high shelf of the last person you were with mm -hmm. yeah to imagine that it would take 45 years that's some bullshit, man. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're, you're on a podcast now. Not, 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 not literally. Many people are. It listening. just felt like a long time finding that one. <laughs> so fix me. Can we, 
can we not even um can we go into the the realms of just saying time doesn't exist and uh you we rotated 45 times around the sun mm-hmm. on earth uh-huh. for now 40, another for person, almost 48 now but yeah like at the time yeah another person coincidentally ran in zoom way out look at the earth yeah. now zoom in on google maps to australia uh-huh. and the two people who just met coincidentally and enjoyed each other's time together uh-huh one of them having an idea of how a future would be another having an idea of how a future would be. Uh Um, that's it. That happened. Mind Uh, fixed. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm not a psychologist or anything, dude. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just trying some shit here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that the, the earth rotated and it went and those bacteria on that earth Mm -hmm. interacted Mm -hmm. And um, one of the bacteria is sitting saying that it won't have as much fun as it did in the past. It could never do what it did in the past. It's done. The bacteria is molded and changed. Uh-huh. There's only new molds and change changes in the futures of all those bacteria on the planet. Mm-hmm. How else can we? How else can we think of it? Uh, what is the expectation that that bacteria feels it deserves? And exactly, it's on not that like Earth. it's not like I deserve to find another top shelf. Top shelf. <laughs> yeah, my ex girlfriend was whiskey. Um, yeah, but maybe the bacteria finds what's best for it now, and that is what is because there's no past anymore. The interaction that we have recorded on our recorder of our memory um, of when that earth was rotating three years ago and Mm. those bacteria were interacting. Now, that bacteria is here in Ireland. That one that was interacting with the one. Mm -hmm. If you can fucking even keep track of all these bacteria. There's like billions interacting and fucking. And uh, now it's here. And so... It, and then you look into its mind somehow, and it just says uh, it, it'll take forever to get what it had mm-hmm. when it was over there doing that thing for that time. But only because is it's that healthy? rare. Is it tr- only because it's fair? No, only because it's rare. I mean, if this was kind of like happening every three years for me, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll find someone else. Mm. But unfortunately, like, you know, kind of, it's 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 such a rare thing for for me to want that. What if the bacteria didn't make it rare? What if it thought it wasn't rare? The bacteria on Ireland could be. I mean, like there might be a bit more optimism. What could the bacteria do to to? It can't recreate it. No, it's done. <coughs> it the happened. bacteria and your teenage years. The bacteria needs to travel again. And. But the bacteria does want someone by its side. Sure. And it, mu- it can't be the one that was there before because that's not... It could maybe happen, but you'd have to try something to make it happen. You'd yeah. have to reach out with loving kindness and be like, yeah, it'd be awesome if we could be, be by each other's sides. I don't know the complications of your life. I don't even know if you can talk to them again. But if not, that can't happen again, and it won't. I know that, and it's so weird because I... <laughs> I do feel like I'm, you know, stifling myself by by thinking this way. If you kind of go, right, there's nowhere I would rather be in the whole world than just like walking into the supermarket holding this person's hand, then you're fucked. You're, you've neutered yourself to any chance of new romance. Every time anything else is happening, all you're thinking about is holding hands at a supermarket. Like you're, For an example, like yeah. yeah, it was just like totally. I'm I'm that happy that a seemingly mundane action like going to buy some food is the best thing ever because I'm with this person. Damn it. Yeah, that's a cunt. I know the same feeling, man, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So and it's happening and you man, you just get so in it. Yeah. You're so we're such we're such back we're such I don't know emotional beings yeah and the emotion creates like a a moving movie Mm -hmm. or 
what does it do? It over instincts kick in so much that then override the mind yeah. to make expectations in the mind yeah. because instincts are kicking so hard. Should you have done, should, here's another, just should we have done something different? Did we? I definitely know, like, you know, after the breakup, I did write a letter, like holding my hand up and saying, I know I did all these things wrong. And this, I, I would change those if we ever had a chance to, you know, rekindle that, that fire. But I mean, yeah. I don't it's, think it's, maybe it's, it's not even worth communicating like that. I just keep thinking now of this guy, Sad Guru, yeah. who uh, he speaks really well. And you might have seen some videos of his on YouTube or something. But no. it's all, um, it's all like, why would we even go down the thoughts of what we could have changed or what? could be different he sad guru practices so much of like now mm -hmm. because and i just went back to it uh, i'll relate back to the thing i was just talking about what's the point of thinking what can i do and what what could have been uh -huh. because none of that's real yeah it's all fantasy yeah. it's n it's not reality and the only reality that exists is now yeah and so there's a bacteria in ireland and there's a bacteria from Canada in Ireland <laughs> talking on microphones. Yeah. Because they believe whatever they believe this will do for them or they enjoy the experience, hopefully in the moment. I mean, there, there is something slightly therapeutic about saying this stuff out loud because it's usually their thoughts that just like knock around inside your skull and they have nowhere to go. Yeah. So if you actually say them, it's kind of like, you know, exercising some of the demons, I suppose. I think it uh, relates back to the truth and uh, why it's so important to speak the truth yeah. from before for yeah. our own well-being and for the well-being of all others. Then maybe two people meet at a supermarket. Some person asks, like, how are you doing? And instead of saying, yeah, good, you mention, you know, the other person says, it's yeah, been why? What have you heard? <laughs> <laughs> it's been one full year who are you the cops <laughs> that I've been what are you an Indian cop immigrated here and I've been talking to a lot of Indians at the grocery store because they're from India yeah yeah they just <laughs> they just got there that's their job feathers um, or dots no dots no feathers <laughs> <laughs> just brown skin right yeah, not North American uh, indigenous or uh, whatever the like natives and things. Um, however you want to. Oh, <laughs> dude! Some of them did Woo! that. I love that. Uh, made me think of that comedian. Um, I forget. Shane Gillis. No, someone else. Love you guys. Uh, <laughs> it made me think of. I don't know. <laughs> Will we do a quick beer run? Um, yeah, there's. I know there's like one beer in. Uh, yeah, well, we can't drink too much. No, no. But I mean, like, I would. I'd love another. Like, you don't maybe have two Guinness. You don't have any Guinness left. No, we could buy four. I um. I have one IPA, and then I would not drink anymore. To today, I want to be in good form on the bus, not be continuing to drink, not hung over on it. Yeah. Um. See, think, this is just bringing me onto the level. Two more would be like perfect. I think that uh, there's something we were talking about with love. Yeah, we're here podcasting. Um, the bacteria, love, yeah. indigenous Indians. Oh, when when and if? Oh, opening up and speaking honestly because it actually is healing for yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you then speak the truth as much as you can and talk about the dark things. Yeah, there's they're entirely real and open and honest and they're they're more in line with the truth of, than anything else and then so many people are probably actually feeling the truth too so then i brought up the supermarket and if someone just asks you at the supermarket how you're doing you don't just say hey yeah i'm well no problems yeah like yeah it's cool weather i know that's an easy way to go and it it just is what it is and we're not always intentionally trying to open up to a supermarket clerk but you just say yeah this whole last year i've actually been thinking about this um this relationship that i can't repeat yeah and then the fucking supermarket clerk is on the exact same vibe wow. and then you talk 
for 15 minutes yeah where you never had talked but they're a total stranger and you have nothing to lose yeah and then you finally open your fucking self up Uh to then go into the depths of how your mind works and speaking aloud then allows you to access and understand what you're actually feeling yeah because you're finally laying it out Mm -hmm. within a sequence of time and that person heals and you heal yeah because you fucking opened up and that's the dark gross truth but they actually had it too and then now you both like helped some trauma you don't feel alone yeah then you start dating Mm mm-hmm and That's then you, your favorite position when you get married with that Indian girl is uh, 69. And it's amazing. And you and scratch you s- the red dot of her head and win a car. I, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to touch it. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> Ding dong. Just, I don't know what the red dot is. Oh, it's third eye access. Okay. Yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> Jesus. This third eye doesn't come out of the mouth. But yeah, uh, like I, I I know what you're saying, and and it, it, it does. It, when when you happen upon a conversation with someone, and they kind of go, "Shit!" Like I've kind of been in a similar situation, or I've kind of experienced, like you know, kind of that kind of low as well. It does. It makes you feel like right. I'm not alone. You know, it the, it's suddenly just a little less sad. You know. Uh, then therefore therapeutic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And as you were saying, I just was bringing that up and just trying to reinforce the idea of truth. Yeah. As Jordan Peterson would say, um, if you're in, he entered his relationship and he just said, um, I will not leave you, but you have to tell me the truth, no matter how dark it is, no matter how you may think I would react or how it will affect us, Mm -hmm. you have to tell me the truth. Yeah. And his reason for it is um, if you live and someone's being dishonest, yeah. Everything's a everything that you are living is now a lie. Mm-hmm. It is not. It is actually uh, not real. Yeah, yeah. Because someone's holding back what is real. Mm-hmm. Therefore, the other person is now in a perception because they perceive everything you speak with them. Yeah. Um, they perceive everything you see and feel, and um, they're navigating their life around what they can see and perceive. Yeah. And if you're not, now you've just spoken a not true fact. So I take it as truth. Yeah. Now my vision of the world is not real. I'm sorry. I'm living in a fake reality and you've painted it by not telling me, by not telling me truth. Mm -hmm. And that is the entire world right now. (laughs) We're all living in a very crazy world that might not be synchronous and synchronicity uh, working or dynamically working very strongly because a lot of us aren't very honest all the time about exactly what's going on. Therefore, a lot of us are walking around with an idea of the world that isn't real Mm -hmm. and not how humans behave and not how they should act. Then we get cancers. Then we get stresses and fucking heart heartaches because we're walking around. We with only, an idealized version of reality. That's all we know is reality, yeah. is our idea of it and what we hear. Yeah. And if people are not very honest, then it hurts so much. And it's so confusing when people, when we feel, and no one else is telling us really how they feel. Yeah. Well, th- there's the amazing thing. When you do find that person and you're able to, like, be open and say, like, you know, I've had some, like, dark years and I kind of, like, you know, kind of, wrestled with this kind of depression or whatever you know and you're able to say that and they're able to comfort you and 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 love you the exact same way as you did before you said it it's like finding that that's what i'd love to find again you know because i think it's worth it or something too yeah yeah somehow that like, it's not all like fireworks and you know <laughs> the persona that you put up on social media for people to see it's like you know there's the everyone's kind of got like you know some struggles that they have to go through and finding someone who can kind of accept the those and kind of go hey it's okay you know we're we're a team now yeah i just i i guess like you know kind of you know being alone with with those it's a little bit harder you know, a winter is like you know, a lot a lot more palatable when you when you kind of got love in your life. I think. 
none of us are designed to be alone. No. Um, me and my friend have been talking. Uh, we, everything we do mm-hmm. is for the purpose of others. Now, our lives are for the purpose of others. We were never, we never grew alone. We <sighs> never, the reason why we're here is because of groups. Yeah. We never, we can learn to hunt and then go be by ourselves, but it makes us extremely depressed not sharing it. Yeah. Um, what am I saying? Like everything, the reason why everything's adapted and become all together is because we've worked it together in groups. And then, so we get rewarded from groups. All of the art you're making, like truly, I may enjoy, I, I don't want this to be the solid statement because I'm not sure if I'm entirely clear on it, but I will, I can maybe say that when I'm making art, sure, I do enjoy it, mm-hmm. but it's because I'm thinking about how others may react to it. But that's okay. I'm just saying it's I would have never known that without other people. Yeah. I would have no drive to. So I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking stoked. I love, I just spent the afternoon making a beat. I had such a good time. I dance. I got, I get really high when I produce, but it's because I grew up with people. Yeah. And then finally. But wanting to make people smile is a good thing. Yes. And yeah. um, this is just a lesson on anyone who thinks they can go it alone or anybody who thinks being alone is good or you were talking about the how much easier it would be in the winter with someone fuck yeah Ah. dude we are not designed to be alone everything what like what you're creating and why you're standing here is to be a member of society and people and intertwined with people it's not and it does feel opposite these days because i think there's a corporate push and a capitalistic push to Mm -hmm make us feel like we can be alone or we should strive and be well alone Ah. and or it's all up to me it's and i should be able to hold my own and things we're not those are kind of they are kind of true and we are trying to fit in this society and we were born into it though i think this capitalistic society is gonna fucking crumble uh, because it's not sustainable it was never designed to be sustainable too we we were fucking everything that we adapted from was in a group and everything we do is motivated to help others or by others. Like it's yeah. not how you behave in the morning, why you brush your teeth. It was all influenced by people who made the shit or who also taught you how to do it. Like, and you do it and you, what you think your rules of respect are or your drive of what is good. It's mm-hmm. based on everyone else you've seen and what they've told you is respectful or what feels nice or, yeah, give or take, like, if you have your own kinks, um, that's your own body's feelings. But they're probably kinks that are to do with someone else's socks or the way they touch you or the way they plug your ass. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> on that, we're, we'll go get some beers. Bear and, on, yeah. Um, we're going to talk about social media. Okay. Yeah, just the influence on how it... Uh, affects our personas of like what's good and bad and um, yeah how it, how it's affecting society because you can see it's massive now like the influence <laughs> <laughs> that, that'll be as confusing as fuck well because no. we had two going at the same time it's like <laughs> i don't know i'm pretty good at zooming in and finding the right moment for the the video like the video audio would have caught it too and then i just zoom right in and just mount line the mountains up mm-hmm. the, the mountains of us two clapping yeah well we just went for a walk grabbed some beers had a little bit of food thank you very much for having me around and all that and um being uh, such an open artist and stuff and um we were going to talk about uh social media and when you bring up how social media is uh making people look good and like how relationships aren't always looking good mm-hmm. uh, or like they're all what you might fantasize it to be or something or see it to be Mm. through social media. I guess it really resonated with a story. I might've brought it up to you or it was someone else recently. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh no. Well, it's about like being super glue. Yeah. It was Friday. I think (laughs) the drunk cast Um, (laughs) embodying and 
and I've been bringing this up for about a month now, but I really do believe I wasn't strong enough to identify that I was actually super officially living my life, always thinking about how I looked on social media uh-huh. um, and taking how I looked on social media as who I was. Um, there, therefore, like unconsciously for years until finally things showed up and then I realized these are corporations and they're not our friends. They're, they're not our friends, but it's so religiously in my mind that I'm going to post things and I'm going to talk to people on there and they're going to see things that I do. And when I do things in real life, I think like I, I should put it there Mm -hmm. and I've been resisting like doing that because I know it's a bit of a trend, but then it doesn't go on there and then people don't see me because people do use it. Mm -hmm. And it would be sometimes advantageous for people to see me more for if myself is my own cash or my, my own business. Uh Um, your own brand. Yeah. Yeah. Having people see the brand, which is me more. Yeah. Might be advantageous. So that was a trip. Um, or it's like so intertwined with us. It's incredible. Um, what about you and social media? Um, I mean, like, I found it, it was it was great for like three things. One, uh, it's where I can put my portfolio, painting, all that, and I can promote promote myself. And I've ninety percent of the business I've ever done has been through Facebook. The second one would be like it's a great way to archive my life like in photographs and stuff like that. So that's part of a legacy that I'm going to leave for like, say my nieces and nephew. Um, they can kind of go, hey, like that was Uncle Dominic's kind of adventures there in photos, you know? I like the thought of that. <clears throat> and then the other one is um, uh, keeping in contact with mates from around the world. Yeah. Being able to, to video chat with like someone in Oregon or, you know, in Germany or something like that, or Finland. Uh, I love keeping in contact with people. Uh, I'm good at it. I make a conscious effort to, to kind of, out of the blue, just ask someone, how are you? you um, I think you've only wrote me like four times in like in nine years. Probably more, actually. Probably about n- 10 <laughs> or 11. <laughs> well, you know. Once I, a year is actually a lot. I'm pr- I, I genuinely wasn't even sure if you liked me. <laughs> I genuinely half did. Yeah. You yeah. see, like, you know, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know because, like, yeah, you, you met that guy who was biting people, you know. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're not biting as many people. And, man, I, I this was the other solid point I've come up with with social media. Holy shit, am I about to lose it? No, come on. Social media... Um, Oh, it and I mentioned this in the, a recent video just in Dublin, right before I came here. Yeah. It was the perpetuating cycle that they've set up for us, and then mm-hmm. it's it's within our human psyche, and it's been around for so long. But it's it's so well decided what the what the platform should be that we naturally want. Okay, here's a quote from my Indian housemate. Like, if I had a Lambo, I'd be posting that on Instagram pretty quick. Sure. And I'm like, ugh, gross. Like, And he's like, what? You wouldn't want to show all your friends that you were doing something cool. Boom. There's the quote. It's like, Instagram is where we put our highlight reel. And mm-hmm. then, therefore, it makes, like I was talking about before. Great way of putting it. The fucking fake life. Yeah. And then, like I was saying before, again, um, the way I look at it, and it's... Sh- when I used to look at it, I don't, I try not to look at any stream anymore or comments, notifications. I only look at the message service and I'm iffy about that too. I can talk about it if I remember, but on Instagram, highlight reel, watching it unconsciously, I do compare myself to it. Even listening to podcasts too much, or um, I had this sickness before I got a little bit depressed for a couple of weeks in Australia because what I was doing is I, I thought I was on the right track by watching motivational inspirational videos Mm -hmm. by all the folks i don't know these days (laughs) most popularly would be like joe rogan uh there's so many like clips of like ah whatever uh being amazing or how you can be amazing but speeches at universities by like jim carrey or yeah he's great totally 
Yeah. But then I actually compare myself to how I'm not as adequate or well-spoken or life experienced or do or feel exactly the way he speaks. Mm -hmm. And if I watch those over and over, yeah, I didn't even realize it, but it was making me, it's an inspiring time and it's cool. But then I, I think that I'm not that right. Cause I'm it's happening and my visual senses aren't beyond aren't beyond the like i'm not aware enough i am human enough that when i see and hear something i take it almost as reality <laughs> i i'm empathetic or emotional enough this is why i can't watch scary movies it's too intense so when i Same. watch when i watch something i think there's enough horror in the world than adding to it you know i some people need it maybe for to feel a certain stimulus. I feel like I'm literally those people and I'm literally getting stabbed or I have the amount of fear that the people have in the film or yeah. whatever they're setting up. It's, it's not for me. It's fucking happening. Kung, so, Kung Fury is for me. <laughs> still <laughs> Which we it. are watching before you leave here. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe. Coffee. Solid maybe. Coffee and Kung Fury. Yeah. So we're, we're looking at these highlight reels. For me, they actually instinctively make me compare pretty much everything I do all day. So obviously, noticed I started to feel bad, so I stopped getting on the feeds and stuff. And then here's the highlight reel that we're on. This may be obvious information for people, but the highlight reel that we want to post on, mm -hmm. they have it down, and it's within our psyche that we human naturally, like it's so well decided where yeah. it should be and how it what they should have for a place it's free and we think it's a part of our lives right. and we use it like it's a part of our lives we literally have profiles and people judge me for my profiles because i judge other people because when i see they have ten thousand followers i'm like oh my god they're so fucking cool <laughs> that people obviously like them um becky i don't because <laughs> i guess i don't use it or i am not liked I love you guys, though. Seriously, come on. Um, <laughs> smash that like button, like and subscribe, hit that bell. You'll get a... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> and then it's a perpetuating cycle of actually giving them the information of what we think is cool constantly and almost forever. Yeah. They've created a free scheme, free, where we, when we feel something is cool, put it there. Yeah. They, they scan that shit. And they scan our actions and how we interact with it to understand exactly what people like the most to be able to sell all that information on where people are at and what is interesting right now. Super valuable information. But it's impossible not to want to put out the highlight reel of your, your life. Go on. Because, like, you know, kind of what I love about, like, face melt is that, like, it says... <sighs> Eight years ago today, and and it shows what you posted. It's a highlight reel. I I love that because like you know, kind of it reminds you of that time then. So I love that. Like that's my favorite part of, of um, that blue, side blue of tube. Fa face melt. Blue tube, <laughs> blue book. <laughs> but yeah, um, it, it's you, impossible. Not I suppose <clears throat> that's the only redeeming. Well, not the only. Maybe. Is it even healthy to look at past images and then believe that you are great because you did something good in your past? Um, I mean like you don't want to rest on your laurels. Sure. But um what I was about to say was I think like that might be one of the redeeming features of Friday's podcast. It does show the shit side of Dom Brown. Yeah. So it shows a sloppy kind of version that like I was even watching kind of going, oh God, I'm better than that. Come on. Yeah. It's not a highlight reel and I'm not cutting it into oh, one. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I hope people watch this one and not the other one. Um, people may watch both. If they're like me and if they do like me, I will listen to like every episode of podcasts that I do like, which is pretty much only Joe Rogan, but. Rogan's brilliant. Yeah. I like you can do 75 push-ups after, like, 11 beers um, in a row, so... That's a weird fact to know about Joe Dude, Rogan. I, I just saw him do push-ups one time, and I, I can do 55, but, like, you can't not be training. He, lo he loves... Training. Yeah, he loves DMT as well. Loves it is maybe a, an overstretch or, like... Well, I've well, seen him, like, whenever I've seen him talk, he mentions it a lot. There's memes about him talking about DMT. Yeah. Yeah. Undeniably, he's probably the most popular person to talk about them as openly as he did yeah. over time. 
and as openly as this podcast is. Yeah. Right? It's amazing. It's fucking awesome. It's the best conversations or like it's crazy when finally you find someone who's done psychedelics too on your travels and stuff. Yeah. Then you finally have somebody to talk about. Yeah. Or sorry, you finally have someone to talk with you about the fucking craziest experiences of your life. I love this. I love when you're traveling and you meet someone like like Wallace or something and he starts telling you about some of the trips he did at festivals or whatever and like what was going through his mind what he thought he was perceiving to experience or see or whatever i love that i'm fascinated by the mind under influence yeah it's, always have been it's like um it's so delicious it's like sugar it's like honey straight out of a fucking hive without the bees yeah <laughs> for the person during the experience they had bees making the honey and then all the bees are gone and you just get to eat the honey you're like listening to the fucking what they went through yeah and it's so tasty because it's rare yeah yeah and it's always like just fascinating to hear about people's like psychedelic experiences and it was way more taboo we're talking 15 years ago, 10 years ago and stuff, like when it was... Oh, to talk openly about psychedelic experiences. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. any any dude, even Because it's frowned upon. Now it's medicinal. Even since... So I'm 30, so 15 years ago I was 15, and I had smoked weed. And then if you could get the conversation with someone else who had smoked weed, and they told you about how it was for them, it yeah. was so interesting. Because you could never hear it from adults. They'd never talk to you about it. Yeah. They'd never tell you their truth. They're honest, like... Yeah. Some parents would. But mine certainly didn't. They were against it. But uh, we, you get to have a conversation about what it felt like. Mm. What was so funny? And it's like, why did you laugh? Like, why is it that we laugh so much on this thing? And like, yeah. And then you fucking get better. You get sober after. Like, it's yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's not all that bad. Laughing a bunch and stuff. Drugs aren't all that bad. Everything in balance. No, I mean like. Um, I'd be the wrong one to say you know, in, in moderation because I just didn't. Mm -hmm. I kept on pouring and forgot to say when and I went berserk. Uh, I lost it for, for a few years, you know. But, uh, um, yeah, yeah um, social media. I want to ask... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to show drug stuff on social media. Um, social media is used... It is around, it is used, it, it has been very cool, though it actually may be ultimately maybe using our egos or making us want to make ourselves look good, therefore yeah. exacerbating what it is to what is cool and what how cool we are. And thinking about that all the time actually distracts us from like just doing work yeah and not judging ourselves because we're <clears throat> judging how someone can do a double backflip on a motorcycle i can see how um the generation that are um growing up now this might be damaging to them since if we lived at a time where social media wasn't a thing it, it wasn't you know drenched in society people weren't taking photos of dinners and stuff like that now that's fine if you want to take a photo of a nice plate plate of food that you made great that's yeah kind of art in itself whatever you know <clears throat> but um in motivation to show it to people to show people like how much you like eat or like i don't know how great you eat i've never done it ever i've never like i think uh for me, it's just not my buzz. But anyway, uh, you know, for me, it's I, I like I made a joke meme saying like I got the most extravagant photo of a <clears> dinner <throat> table with loads of like a feast on it, and I, I kind of wrote like you know my my life is better than yours. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, it, the, 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 I think the competitiveness, um, uh, which is running through social media could be potentially damaging to people who are growing up just knowing it okay um because the things that you can show in a picture aren't valuable maybe uh, no like, hold but, up hold up like yeah. they don't show emotion they don't show how well you're doing they don't show actual like 
connections with human beings and love, which is like pretty much the source of everything we need. Can I ask a question? What what doesn't show that? Uh, images on social media. Of food? Of everything that people would want to comparatively put onto social media that looks good these days. The value systems of what is really cool isn't I'm, actually... I disagree with that because, like, if you if I took a photo of Luna, like, and put it on social media, that's love right there. Hmm. You know... Hmm. It doesn't have to be the traditional, like, wedding photo to, to show love. I do think that they're, like, you know, kind of images can, like, speak, like, <laughs> cliche, a thousand words or whatever, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah. So maybe it's just the subconscious thing. Like, when I see the picture of Luna, I don't have a dog, so I don't have that love. Like, this is un <laughs> this is unconsciously what happens inevitably by looking seeing something mm -hmm. we're not beyond our senses like we perceive it as real though it's a meta world it's a photo i'm not there i see the dog from canada i see the dog and i see you and you're like i love this dog and i'm i don't have a dog to love yeah that's undeniably a difference and a, a gap that could be created that then could make suffering within someone mm -hmm. by just using a thing that someone just posted a picture of a dog that they love, and I just use a thing, and I just see a picture, but which now, I, I perceive as real. I get what you're saying, but I, I think I was leaning to, more towards, like, beauty standards, stuff well, like that. You were going against the idea that I said there's you can't post about love, and then I thought that was a great, you're right. So yeah. then I'm trying to figure out why the fuck is it making us sick? I don't know. I think I, I I I think about it. I I have to I have to say that maybe part of it is growing up without social media and knowing what society was like and all of that before everyone was on a phone. What is that doing to people? Even traveling. <gasps> it's making us live through the lives of others and it us is. not live our own lives. It is. Oh, We're vicariously living blah, blah, through blah, blah, someone blah. else. Um, I heard that off Dr. Phil. And then another quote I heard off Dr. Phil is, um, since social media has made it onto smartphones, yeah. um, depression, loneliness, and suicide has gone up f every single year. That doesn't surprise for me. For all ages. Fuck. Every single year, 2024 is the all-time high. Jeez and it's Christ. it's just going up because... That's sad. Yeah. So then what is it? I don't Why know. do we still use it? But it, if that's the case, I re I distinctly remember that the paradigm shift between um, traveling when there was no iPhones and traveling with iPhones, like how mode. how much people communicated in hostels, in social rooms, uh, versus that, like it's yeah. it's it's created a horrid divide where. People used to speak a lot more. Now it's kind of like you have your crowbar out to try and get a conversation out of someone. They think it's weird if you want to just talk to them. They're like, yeah. who the fuck is this clown? Because it's scary because then you have to speak your truths and you have to open up and you have to hold your own. Like, undeniably, just to have confidence to speak to someone, you have to have a, a grounding force of who you think you are and what you're doing there yeah. and why you're here. And it's not just to fucking go to i'm here in paris so i can get a picture of the eiffel tower for this phone that i'm literally on so when i try to talk to that person who's editing their photo mm. at the eiffel tower that they just took the that's the ground they're standing on they're there to get that fucking photo they're yeah. not there because they are genuinely communicating to anybody or learning anything exactly but, not all the time not all the time but but they're documenting their life which i can understand as well because i, I i've written a bunch of memoirs and I, at some <coughs> stage i would love to actually try and get it published you know and i would probably have some photos in there as well links to music whatever you know um but i do find that like you know kind of having photographs not even the ones that i took like you know to back up a story that seems so far-fetched. Yeah, right, you broke someone's nose when you're after seeing The Matrix because you thought you were Keanu Reeves, you know? Sure. But then when there's photos, people are like, fuck, he wasn't lying. Yeah. So I do love that, that they're, they're just kind of like a proof of, like, tall tales. 
Yeah, yeah. It it, <laughs> it it helps people get into the story more too, and like they, it's definitely true. It's more true now because they see a picture. But as well, like it makes me fucking love the story that much more because I start to get emotionally involved in it because I see it. Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, dude, it's like I was kind of there. I heard the story. I heard it from you. Yeah. Here's the guy with the broken nose. Mm-hmm. It's like I can remember that story more, and I can embody it and take it with me. And the other thing about taking photographs, like, okay, that person that was at the Eiffel Tower, they... um, But isn't talking to me at the hostel, by the way. Or, like, I gotta get a curl bar out to talk to them. Or everyone talks to them because they're hot. (laughs) (laughs) I'm talking to them because they're hot. Or they can't talk because they've got a mouthful of gravel. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, no, uh, that person that went to the Eiffel Tower... They are there to experience the majesty of this structure. Um, But I think as well, it's okay to document it, especially if they're creative with the photo. I've never understood. Again, this is like other people can do it. It's just not for me. Taking photos of stuff that you'll find on Google Image. I'm kind of like, well, there's a better version of that in Google Image. Like, so what? You know, but doing something fun with the photograph or including a... Get your cock out. <laughs> <laughs> now bite my cock, Gary. Print, print it out. Come on it. Send it to your loved ones. <laughs> <laughs> I send this back to my wife once I'm just going to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Nice. But uh, yeah, an, an alternative Thinking version about of, you, baby. It's like, you know those stained. people that do this kind of thing to... You know, the so Eiffel the t- Tower. Or yeah. Leaning Tower Pisa, whatever. So, all that kind of thing. Sure. I like those, you know. I like the ones where they're, they're, they've purposely missed it by a great deal and they're crossing their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to like yeah. the eyes do, crossed. Do, doing that, like, you know, beside the Sphinx. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> like, I got your nose, you know. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, And then a rebuttal to the google images having the image like when i've talked about this too with people and uh, someone laid it into me they're like no but my image will be ultimately different and yes I, I know i took it i know and when they look at it they're like no that's my image like and i don't want to be I judgy that. towards that at all because that's the way they want to you know kind of keep memories and I, I, i'm not one to say that's right or wrong it's just not me it's too, that's all it's too bad when they uh, have a worse camera and take a worse photo of the great wall of china to show you the great wall of china <laughs> when you're just like wait a minute why don't we just hit up the uh google walk yeah. app and literally just walk it for a second and explain to me what you saw there yeah because this i can literally zoom into this fucking dirt on this crack right here <laughs> like with the google image fucking full Before walk you put it in your pine. the great wall of china <laughs> And you're just showing me this sh- kind of bad picture of Great Wall of China? Like, yeah. You can tell me you took a picture there so that I know, and I'm, that's cool. And you can tell me you were there. Cool, great. Proud of you. I am proud of you. And then if you're trying to get detailed and description, like, pick, let's pick up those better images that are more descriptive, and then I can see them better too. It's weird because, like, then when someone passes away, I, I told you that, like, I was building towards doing a painting for a guy in Oregon called Cody, and he passed away about a week ago. Now, everything there, all the messages, everything that he posted and everything like that, that's from a ghost now. Like, that's that's his legacy. It's left there. It's, yeah. you know. So every photo that he has on there, that that is now a contained time capsule type, th- you know, part of a rep- representation of his life. Facebook's going to start selling time capsule representation packages. They're going to sponsored by 2D designs. Uh, sponsored by <laughs> Amazon delivery company. Yeah. Uh yeah, Amazon will deliver it. Uh here's the bundle from your family member who died. We send them to everybody. Keep yeah. using Facebook. Bunch of Chinese glossy pictures. <laughs> from uh their fucking profiles from Jesse bro <laughs> their their profile pictures of like when france had an attack and then so it's like a profile picture with the red white and, and like black lives matter picture and then like the Klu klux klan member photo profile image getting Jesus getting pro, getting profile pictures printed out facebook delivers them just automatic machines man yeah uh, so human 
to be going through actual death and decease and then fucking we have facebook to be there and shit like here's a terrifying fact that i heard not too long ago that facebook had two ai bots working for for algorithms and stuff like that but they had to like shut both of them down because they started communicating with each other in a language unknown to humans Aye. that's terrifying that's skynet bro that's that's not Skynet. That's Skynet is the internet connection in the world. Skynet's crazy though. Oh, Skynet from Terminator Two. Fucking uh, the p- computers become self-aware and want to wipe out humans. Yep. No, uh, dude. Terrifying. Have you been not listening to AI podcasts and stuff? Like I watched the the Elon Musk one. Yeah. Uh, I, J- Joe Rogan and Elon Musk. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah. No, yeah. there's even like. Uh, oh, sorry. I forget the guy's name. Um, Ah, Weinstein, Eric Weinstein. Okay. Um, many scientists, uh, people who work at social media companies. Okay. They all have takes on it. And then people who designed AI, uh, chat GPT, and they've left the group because they're like, no, dude, we're going to make this. We're going to unleash this. And they believe in machines more than they believe in humans and stuff. Dude, it's, there's so much. It's spooky. Do you find it spooky? Like no. I'm not one for conspiracies or anything like that, but like I'm this not, is this yeah. is happening. I'm more scared of uh, tyrannical leaders. Yeah, well, human, Jesus, me too. Human tyrannical leaders than I am AIs right now. And yeah, yeah, yeah. megalomaniacs are terrifying. I could think about up the world. We should all just put a pause on AI, literally. Yeah, and deal with the tyrannical leaders because yeah. they suck we should deal with those first then we won't have tyrannical leaders using ai <laughs> yeah and if ai is better ai is better than us and it wants to take over so be it what's it's, spooky about the tyrannical leaders is because they, they have the power to push a button to nuke the world that's terrifying a, i've even written about that in a song it kind of okay yep 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 yep, yep. i terrifying Oh yeah, I've just dropped that fear because I have no control over it. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. If it shit's gonna go down, then um, it will, and then I have no idea what life's gonna be like. I don't know how we'll navigate. It'll be so complex and so deadly. And it, it, that that's probably the right a- attitude to have because if it's like completely out of your control and you can't do anything about it anyway, you just have to kind of go. Well, that's only going to make me lose my hair if I think about it. You yes, know? it's very, it's very awful and scary to think about what we would lose if there was a, a sure bomb. but i'm not i can't think like that because there isn't one now and maybe there will never be one i i it's I, detonated I, uh, enough of them to like fuck enough things up and stuff and yeah we maybe should never just detonate another one i don't know maybe we should i flew into um america on september 10th 2001 and the next day the world trade center got attacked and um yeah i think the attitude that we had then there was me and the four of my mates there we said let's just like go to saint augustine because that's like a, a place that we know and if the world is if this is world war three it's about to kick off and we're on the grounds of like <laughs> probably you know a nuke site let's just get like really fucked up <laughs> so that's what we did we paid someone to like drive us in a taxi from orlando to saint augustine and got completely lit hmm yeah because we were like well it, you know we Dif- might yeah. as well die happy <laughs> yeah different end of the world strategies that everybody has like yeah Man. everyone's building their zombie shelters you should have an escape plan i remember one time and it served me well to just be realistic and i actually thought of it last night when i went to go to the bathroom and someone was in the bathroom and i was like fuck i'll go pee outside yeah. and then the door was locked from the inside the, the front door i think you need a key to open uh-huh. the front door and i'm like wow if there was a fucking fire i yeah. don't know i don't have a plan like and if i went this way and i got cornered i could have died it's just like so Right now, think about, dude, a fire can happen or some sort of accident. You may as well just think of it for a second, just so you have some idea. Here's a story. There's this dog in Mexico. Okay. His name's Negro. And huh? it's a Negro, black. Aha. Uh-huh. And uh, it's a pit bull. 
and it's known it had killed other dogs. Shit. Yeah. And people just tolerate it around. And, uh, Wild on the street. Stray. Yeah. Yeah, okay. there's a lot of stray dogs in Mexico. And then there's, yeah, stray dogs. They're stray and no one owns them, but, like, everyone kind of owns them. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And they have the best friendships with certain people. Yeah, Negro had Tbilisi, a best friendship. Tbilisi, Istanbul, all really, f- uh, loads of stray dogs, all really well fed, super friendly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're just a lot. <clears throat> yeah, this one dog kills dogs. And then everyone's kind of just... So you hear that, and everyone's a little bit too fucking nice. For a dog that actually kills dogs. Except to this the, dog. Yeah, yeah. And I just uh, felt we were just chilling at our camp all at the table. And he was he was around. And I just do the one-two on the dogs we love. Yeah. That are no... I don't... I have a resistance to loving that dog because mm-hmm. I know it killed other dogs. Yeah. And it does some fucked up shit. Like, it'll bite tires. And it'll little, literally pop a man's tire who's pulling in. It just does these jumpy freak out things. Yeah, that's not good. I know, right? Everyone's I like, mean, well, killing let the it. other dogs is worse, but yeah. Let it live. Let it, like, you know, oh, just, oh, hey, he's still cute. It's like, hold up a minute. Like, mm. and uh, I just, I was there, I was sitting there, Negro was around, and I was like, if Negro tries anything, I just had the preemptive thought of, like, I am going to grab that chair. And it was a camping chair yeah. that uh, folds out, uh-huh. a three pronger. Yeah. So some are four, yeah, and yeah. Uh, a three pronger. It was a good like fork to be able to pin it. Yeah, is yeah. what I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I was chilling, and then it it didn't happen since we were there. We were there a month, uh-huh. Negro, and I just it's just a story about the dog that it's killed another dog. And then I'm like, well, anyway, it fucking grabbed another dog, and it's now I'm because I weighed it up. I'm like, okay, so we're gonna be nice, but what if it? What are we going to do when it goes to kill another dog? What mm-hmm. are we going to do? What's your plan? Yeah. You're going to... And I, I thought... Spectate? With that fucking chair. And I just thought... Because I thought of... Okay, so the dog's going to kill another dog. And then I'm like... Then everyone's going to watch a dog die and f- right here tonight. That'd be fucked up. That's that's what motivated me to be like... Yeah. If that dog attacks a dog, I'm going to grab that chair and I'm going to pin it. Yeah. It's best... I'm going to pin the fuck out of it because mm-hmm. fuck that dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, it did. It grabbed a dog, <clears throat> uh, just ch- clamps, clamps on its neck mm-hmm. and just clamps. And I so quickly knew exactly what I was doing. Yeah. And I felt really comfortable with it. And it was amazing. It was amazing because everyone freaked out and no one knew what to do. I have a different version of that, but not for me. Uh, my mate Walter, like, uh, we used to jam when we were in Billy Nomade up the back roads here. My friend lived up on a, the top of the hill there. Aye. And um, my mate was walking back to his town to kill my mate Walter. And he was like stoned. Kill is a town. He wasn't trying to kill someone. <laughs> he was walking back to kill someone. Yeah, he was walking back to the town of Kill. And he was stoned. And he thought to himself, geez, if a car came around the turn now, I wonder if I could dive out of its way before it hit me in the dark. So he just dived into the bush to see how quickly he could dive. <laughs> he, he got out of the bush, he said, like, he, said he, he was by himself. And he said, he t- telling me this story, he kind of went, I felt good about myself then. I knew I could dive into a bush fairly quickly. <laughs> like into a ditch. So yeah. We're trying. Good old Walter. We're it, trying. Dude, it, it, it'll save your life. Yeah. And if that's you, why. If you run through a scenario and kind of go, what would I do here? Yeah. And then, well, if you don't ever have an option, if yeah. you never thought of an option, you're going to need to think of one in a panic. Yeah. This is why airplane pilots do all the tests they do. They, yeah. they get emergencies into fake emergency situations over and over again. So when it does happen, yeah. you just know what to do. Yeah. And the same with... Which is a massive comfort if you fly a lot. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's... It's it's what we know about humans. Yeah. Yeah. Same with... um Yeah. That's why people train fighting and stuff. Then you know what to do. Yeah. And you, when you're in a great panic and you fight, you know, watching like, I don't know, YouTube videos or people who don't know how to fight and they're in a great panic trying, they can yeah. be horribly bad and waste a lot of energy not doing things uh, well, not yeah. doing things with great efficiency, therefore draining their energy, not, um, yeah, two people fighting who don't know how to fight. Uh, all theory. 
I don't never been in a fight and I don't train, but I, I see and understand and that's what I hear. And what I believe is trained fighters they uh they're not freaking out. Yeah. They, they are. They just watch you and they know and they're how steady much, and they know when to strike. How much you can do. Yeah, and yeah, hearing it from our fan favorite here, Joe Rogan. Um hearing it from him, he's not even there to they're not even there to strike at a certain point because they, it'd be so unfair. Mm-hmm. They're like they just keep everybody safe yeah, by, like, yeah. putting you in a headlock. <laughs> like, because, yeah, they can see what you could even possibly do before you could do it. Like, at the distance you're at and stuff, they just, they know it. They've already seen it. They've played this game so much. You've never been in a fight? No. I've never, um, Never been pepper sprayed? No. Oh. No. I have, but, like, not... Not violently. I did it as a kind of a... Pepper spray. A joke, yeah. Oh, pepper... You had the pepper spray? No, I I got, like, a barman to pepper spray me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's... Shit's crazy, man. Yeah, I, I, only, I only did it so, like, this other guy from Colombia, he would get pepper sprayed as well as kind of part of the, the do- joke. It was yeah. daring. You're nuts, man. It's Remo. That's kind of a cult thing, I, like, me and my mates kind of invented when we were younger. Where you dare yourself to do something ridiculous, but say Remo, and Remo means like the uh, your company have to do the same thing. So, burning your skin and breaking your bones and doing all sorts of weird stunts and stuff. And then I saw Jack so and I was like, "What? That's Remo, except like they filmed it." So I would have like you're like I'm gonna jump off this cliff and break my bones, Remo, and then I have to do it suddenly because that's stupid and i wouldn't want to be your friend yeah i know we were stupid <laughs> at a certain no no i was pretty scared to break my bones uh other people would do bigger drops and bigger um bridge jumps and stuff and you i were skateboarder i would not um no long border down, okay downhill okay would but not like competitively no like but i'd say that does wonders for your confidence I know Remo did. Skateboarding. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Overcoming the fear of literally, and you do fall and get hurt, and you know you will, and again, at some point, if you keep skateboarding, you but pretty Remo much... But Remo was a competitive sport in its own right. I mean, like, I definitely know that, like, doing things that are terrifying after you do them, you feel bulletproof. You, you kind of, your confidence goes through the roof. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking about... There's some things that are, like, pretty stupid. Yeah. Well, like, you were meant to be stupid when you are younger. Yeah. Well, and you, you're you not meant to be. You just are. <laughs> you just haven't experienced life yet. Yeah. And then people say you can't do something, and you don't know that you can't yet until you go learn that you can't. Yeah. And then you broke your leg. Yeah. And you're like, holy fuck, this hurts. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you can't yeah. stop that fast. You didn't know that until you fucking smashed a snowbank. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the wee Irish rain. Uh, Just a little bit? Am I wrong? It's just a little bit. Okay, so one of the things that should be highlighted, and I think that's really important and interesting, is like to... To gain the trust of listeners, and I do this as a practice in uh, DJing as well, like just be confident and be be yourself or like, fuck, what am I saying? To gain, <laughs> <laughs> to gain respect, people have to have seen that you've done the work. Uh-huh. And it's like, so where did you, where did you do all the work? I guess a lot of psychedelic trips in your past. You're an Irishman. You've been... <laughs> bad shit crazy especially since the fucking acid and stuff after art school did you just go you've just been traveling for um 17 years um i don't know i mean like the first big travel was florida to st augustine's like after i got expelled from our college i went and i did my own portfolio the way i thought it should look and I embraced the trip and everything like that, you know. And I got into the um, three really prestigious courses, like for visual communications, graphic design, and animation in different art colleges. 
and uh, and I turned them all down. I found out in Florida over the on a payphone in the hood um, from my mad that like I'd got into these colleges, and I kind of went, I just want to travel, mm. and do drugs. So, so that's what I did. <laughs> just went to Holland instead. And then you funded your travel with a bit of art along the way, right? Nah, no, no, no. Back then, like, you know, kind of what I do is I'd, I'd work stop gap jobs, like car washing or like a pizza factory or whatever. And I just like save up a stack of cash. Now I'd work as well while I was traveling. So like I'd work in a tulip bulb factory in Holland, for example, you know. A bulb factory? Yeah, like tulip bulbs. There's loads of them. Tulip is just bulb, old classic bulbs. Yeah, classic uh, uh, flowers, multicolored flowers. That like Holland produces like an in an order and amount of like tulips, and uh, there's loads of tulip factories in the countryside of Holland. Oh, the flowers. Yeah. Not okay. The bulbs are the bulbs. Of, yeah, for the planting. seed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. I'm thinking about literal light bulbs. All now. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In I'm big into light bulbs. Of tulips, yeah, of all co- the light bulbs of all colors. Yes, of course, I have an idea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, Dominic, I see you work like a madman. This is what this guy said to me one time. We're in the, the tulip factory, and he gets stoned, and then try and like, work twice as fast as everyone else to see if I could, you know. So I'm like, frantically doing this, and like the... Usually the foreman would come in and the he'd like go, go really quickly so everyone would step up his game or step up their games. But he came in and I was going, and I was like twice as fast as he could possibly go. And he kind of went, show sure, Dominic, I see you work like a madman. <laughs> and I went, I see you have a very good control over the English language. He went, yes, of course. Otherwise, it would be a waste of education. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got fired from that factory twice, both for being insane. <laughs> well, uh, that's what they told you that's what they said too crazy the spookiest thing about getting fired from that factory the the the, the boss for the, of the whole place was this plump woman with kind of a, a blonde afro and the most beautiful green eyes teeth <laughs> long blonde curly teeth <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the, when she fired me and my mate she had fucking grey eyes. It was the only time I saw her with grey eyes. It, it was spooky. Were you how high on LSD? No. Okay. <laughs> it was spooky because she either took out contact lenses to fire us or put them in. But either way, she had changed the colour of her eyes just to freak us out. And it worked. Yeah. Like looking at, into the eyes of a phantom or something. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it was really weird. That was the second time? That was the second time, yeah. The first time I got fired and I was almost leaving and some English guy came in, he's fucking Irish, we're all fucking crazy. And like he kind of convinced them to like, hey, he's one of the best workers though. So they kind of took me back just before I walked out. How did you get paid back then? Gilders. It was before the Euro. Whoa. Oh, Gilders. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know what that was, man. Yeah. Okay. So that's a currency before the Euro in Holland. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, so what did it equate to, man, in euros is what I'm trying to say. Um, I suppose, what would it have been? I'd say about, I, I suppose about 130 euro for the week, which was okay. Covered renting the caravan and, you know, buying drugs. <laughs> <laughs> man, you liked your drugs, man. Mm. Do you know how many hits of acid you've had in your life? Thousand? I, um, Thousand's a lot. I don't think it's a thousand. Yeah. I think it's... I might have had like 100. I I think it's it's over 500, that's for sure. Yeah. I don't know, I never counted, but I mean... I know. I used to eat it every day, yeah. I never counted either. So when you ate it every day, it wasn't microdosing. It's not that culture, like Silicon no. Valley. No, I, I was like literally getting up, putting it in my mouth, and then I'd be watching TV with my folks. They wouldn't know I was tripping. I just tripped everywhere. Dude. I was like, on my motorcycle tripping, riding around the back roads here. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, and you liked it? it loved st- it. Yeah, it didn't stress you out. Yeah. No, I loved it. I was like, my mind was like so, I was completely master of my reality back then. Dude, 
I got hired by a 75 year old in Australia, build some houses for him. He was a builder, so he was allowed to, uh, yeah, be the guy who drew out the building. Mm-hmm. And then you're legally permitted to hire then con- contractors or uh, construction people. So he was the builder, but it was also his place. 75 years old, um, eats one meal a day of curry. And um, is that true? Two meals a day, but both times curry makes a big pot and it's for like two weeks it's all frozen rice and curry and then it literally eats the same thing but moral of the story uh delivery shows up bunch of fucking wood guy (laughs) wood for the house (laughs) (laughs) hello (laughs) 75 years old surprise got a a lot of wood and yeah uh, (laughs) <laughs> the guy inside is like, I'm not getting out. I'm not unloading. I'm 55 years old. <laughs> Buddy is just like bouncing around him. He's like, I'm 20 years older than you. <laughs> just like grabs a bunch of beams, packs them, packing them just as much as I would. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one less because uh, he was a little shorter and he's 75 years old where I was 25. No, 24. And uh, dude, his favorite thing to do, um, take LSD and ski. <laughs> wow yeah that would be wild 75 year old man wow Bro. what a dude i know he was a dude and he was very yeah fucking came out and he would be firm with our speed and stuff like fucking still a boss still on it still yeah. sharp. not That's at all great. like a spacey guy but he's, he just told he hired me because he said i was from golden bc and he's like i skied there once and then just way later like two months into the job he's like yeah man i just love skiing and whatever i can do to get skiing again um i just love being on lsd and skiing that's my favorite pastime wow yeah i'd love to chat to that guy in the bar i maybe have his email um they're between uh colorado and australia there i might video call him nice I might video call him and just say, I'd love to hear a couple of stories from you. If you can, yeah. yeah. Fuck. I haven't talked to them. I want to just thank them again because they are they were dope. They're like, yeah, we're going to pay you in cash. Don't pay tax. <laughs> Don't pay taxes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay you in canaries. Um, what did they say as well? Yeah, I was alive during the Vietnam War. I, uh, I got drafted, but I made it optional. That's what he told me. Wow. Yeah. Which then, yeah, man, not a small deal. You're like a deserter yeah. at that point. Then you're a criminal. And I suppose, I suppose he has seen some sort of hell. He never told me anything more about it. No, but he, um, no, he didn't go. Yeah, or fuck, no. I oh, don't he know. didn't go. Well, no, he said he, he, he just said. Ah, he boldly, rejected the draft. Yeah. I don't, I, yeah. Actually, who knows? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't know if he went and then left or like he totally bailed and then got drafted and he was already somewhere else and gone Mm -hmm. or if he got drafted and then he was a part of like protests yeah yeah he just said um i made it optional yeah 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 fair juice to him fuck it like when someone says like jump why do you have to say how high you can say no fuck you like that's the great thing about like this guy i know this german guy alex who's the owner of the building, Happy Go Lucky, that I painted. Aye, ah, tell me this. Um, he's, he's, like, I love the way, like, the authorities, the bigwigs and the bureaucrats are actually saying, you have to do this. And he's going, no. Why do I have to do that? Just because you tell me to? No. Yeah. You think that that's the law? Because You know, he's like, this is bullshit. What he wants to do is he wants to actually run for mayor and change the law this is how cool this guy is that is cool what like can you shape out the whole story here i I can yeah okay so hostel um, you paint more murals you're an artist we've barely talked about how you're an artist um he's making these new hoodies they're 2d designs um uh, if you want prints or if you want clothing that's super bizarre and totally super weird and designed by him very colorful maybe for festivals and stuff Perfect for festivals. Get him on T-shirts there. as well. You support him. And if you can make it any way you can make it, like, yeah, I know it's cheaper to go unethically and get shit from China and or plastics, but if you can, my recommendation, I don't know, see if you can make it out of hemp and, like, pay people a good wage and then hopefully a good wage can also come to it. Maybe yeah. you can have that option. Just for sustainability of the earth and for well-being of all of us. Because Possibly, yeah. 
yeah, like definitely worth considering or, or looking into researching. You know? Well being, well being of people who are just like paid little. To then make, you know, we can fucking get shirts ordered for like two bucks, five bucks or something to then sell for our 15 bucks or 55, whatever. But it's a horrible story. Yeah. How it's all there. And then the materials it's made of. Mm -hmm. Little microplastics go into our ecosystem. Shite. Every wash. Yeah. Like that's, that's what happens when we want low prices and shit. Sorry I interrupted you. But I know the production of these in Egypt and shipped from Stockholm, uh, they, they don't, da it doesn't damage the earth. The carbon footprint is like minimalized. It's important to the people, uh, the manufacturers, because I've spoken to them in depth about this on business calls, you know? Nice. Yeah. Even, well, people will be like, yeah, they're, they're good or whatever. And sometimes they don't know maybe, or it's all up to you as a consumer, what you find valuable mm -hmm. and what, like if maybe that, you know, something else that they don't and they say, no, this is good for the planet. Like two people will have an opinion of what is good for the planet. Yeah. Um, so maybe they're just, people love to say they're good to the planet. Yeah. We, yeah. Cause then you're a good person. Yeah. Um, but then surely when you look in, that's called, what's that called? False being responsible <laughs> no false advertising <laughs> right yeah, yeah when you uh, many people do this like uh mcdonald's writing 100 percent pure angus beef right that's literally the name of the company and it's not actually what it is it's the name <laughs> of the company wrong they, old. they named their company that like me saying i'm a virgin yeah dj group Right. And it's like, yeah, man, we're, you're my first. Read the, fi <laughs> read the fine print. You're always my first. But then I'm not lying to you because it's just my name. Mm. Some shit like that or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Happy Go Lucky uh, is the name of a hostel in Berlin. And this is a, this is actually something I, I, be, I started talking to, to you uh, about this on the phone. And I, I barely myself. heard any of it. Yeah, like you yeah. just were talking about fucking murals and um, Berlin laws or something. Yeah. So uh, I've painted it on this street called Stuttgarter Platz uh, in Charlottenburg in Berlin. And it's a five story mural that I did on a cherry picker over two months with spray cans. And I freestyled that whole thing and it was great, you know. Uh, I mean, like, not if the result was, um, seemed to please a lot of people, you know. Yeah. Uh, because it's just love and happiness and color. That's all it is. There's nothing controversial about it, nothing like that. Not, you know, no reason to put noses out of shape. Um, but the Berlin building department were already objecting to this thing um, before I had finished. And... Um, and it started this scuffle with them where I ended up on the news, like, I mean, on the TV, in the pub, like, people were saying, I saw you on the television, I got interviewed for the news, and I was in Berliner Morgan Post, like, for, with 100,000 readers, it's a newspaper there, bunch of online magazines, bunch of newspapers, all of that. Um, but I painted that in 2016. Now, I went over late last year, um, to protest them putting scaffold up on the thing to paint it grey. They told the owner that he had to do it and we were there to peaceful protest um, with a bunch of other people. Why? Against, why? Is, why? Here's the thing. What is the city of Berlin thinking they're doing? Uh, they think that basically, this is the latest one now, basically that like our building is stealing the thunder from a building that's like two buildings down on the corner, which is a heritage protected thing. And they think that this is too colorful uh, to be s seated anywhere near this other building. Shut the front door. Right. Let us thrive in our new age. Let the old be gone. If it's, it's not as colorful. Yeah, we're supposed to. We're supposed to progress. Yeah. In color. Now, um, Alex has always said no to them. And he'd been in a court battle with these people. And, uh, and yeah, they are going to, like, they did put up the, the scaffolding and covered it in this gray web. So it's already gone, essentially. It's just hidden now. Um, and they, they will 
eventually paint it all gray. Turn the building fucking gray. For that, that feels unfair and limiting towards the freedom of a building that you own. You know yeah, what I mean? it's his building. Yeah. And you should be allowed to paint colors on your building as well. Grayness is not like a high level of well-being. It's shit. I white is arguably a little bit better. Yeah. Than gray. Yeah. Like, but it's not when buildings are more colorful, I believe, and I think I've heard uh, people are actually happier. When a city is more colorful exactly. and all the houses are more colorful, when you think of the coasts of Canada or you think of the houses in um, South America. This is one of the street art capitals of the world. There's a massive uh, street art scene in Berlin. So I don't know why. Who funds this enough? But it's Who's funding it? it? The Berlin Building Department? No. They, what they've done is they've put up the scaffold. Now they're charging him 20,000 euro for the painting of this building i think that's unfair that's fucking nuts that's so unfair. of course we were pr pr uh, protesting but when it turns gray i i thought of a plan that day that they started putting it up we went for dinner and i said you know i have an idea for a way for a way we could flip off the berlin building department after they do this yeah and he said okay what is it and i said well seeing as it's gray um I could do this kind of like gorilla job during the night time. We've rented a cherry picker for one night. Uh, and I'd, I'd do this in springtime when the weather is a bit better. Uh, my plan is to like, you know, kind of like uh, do a, a, a kind of a, a quarter circle kind of thing at the, the top of the buildings and put some sky and cloud in there. And I'll have pre-stenciled uh, cut a bunch of lettering on like A1 sheets of card. So I'm, I'm going to do cracks and stuff like that, like it's stone and all that. And I'm going to do the lettering, spray the lettering onto it, uh, saying here lies the happy-go-lucky hearts mural buried alive in broad daylight by bureaucrats 2016 to 2024 hmm. and turn it into a massive tombstone. And I guarantee we get into the news again and all the papers again. So he loves this idea of turning it into like, oh, like, are you not embarrassed that you just killed art? You know what I mean? Mm. So, uh, so he loves that. Now I said like, that's only good for a month or two. And then you'd have to do something different then. And he said like, well, it'd be cool if you did like, you know, kind of, I don't know, Day of the Dead Skulls and, you know, then started decorating the thing like in the summer, you know? And I went, yeah, that'd be deadly. Uh, a day or two later, um, we were um, we were in a different hostel of his. I think he's got three in Berlin, and and I showed him uh, all the designs from these two D things. I just showed him uh, uh, like the the images themselves, not mocked up onto uh, hoodies or anything like that. But he thought that like he loved this series, and he said to me, uh, "Well, why don't we actually print these out on waterproof type canvases?" And put them all over the front of Happy Go Lucky, <laughs> and uh, and I said, could I put QR codes on them to send people to the website? And he said, absolutely. And he said, like we should sell them in reception as well, the hoodies and T-shirts. I was like, yes. So I've had a really good working relationship with this guy for years. I painted more than the facade. I painted tables and uh, multiple walls inside the place as well. Yeah, I've returned there, kind of like you know. Like a like drunken monkey, keep boomeranging back every couple of years to do something new, you know. So cool. Yeah. So, for someone trying to start a clothing brand, it's a massive opportunity to have someone who would actively make a build a five story building an advertisement for your clothes. It's, it's great. It's amazing. Yeah, that that sounds unreal. And then I really want and hope that there can even be more of a message to like maybe the people who literally did it and just says like these people like if it they have an abbreviation like Berlin Building Department BBD killed yeah. killed this art. Like, yeah. If it said that because that is true. Look, when I was interviewed on the the. Uh, for newspapers and uh, and all that, like in October, I didn't mince my words. I compared them to Nazis. 
I said, like, you know, uh, in the Second World War, a certain German establishment that the good people of Germany are not historically proud of um, confiscated a bunch of art, like hundreds of paintings, and and, um, and had a... a, a, a Cleansing. Con- yeah, yeah, they, 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 did, they didn't deem it, like, fit for society. So they thought that they would, like, you know, take it for themselves. And I said, it's so sad to see history repeat itself. They're limiting others from becoming more well. Or they're limiting others. Like, what about the, if the whole... Like, fuck that one building. They're just making that one building valuable. Yeah. Um, why don't they make it so... The whole street could be a beautiful street. You could do art on every one of the buildings. <laughs> and, I mean, that would be amazing. Um, yeah, but, it, but it, it's so weird to be... In stopping one, yeah. they're stopping anything from progressing. They're only making one building well. And, and then it, one building is owned by one person. It gives them power to do it again. It That's also only benefits one motherfucker. Yeah. Someone is holding on to power. It's a power trip. And That's they're not letting other people have a better life. Yeah. And the thing is, there's... If color brings people more life, yeah, they're holding people against having a better life. Yeah. Well, what I said on the on the news when I was visit or I interviewed for the TV that day um, back in two thousand sixteen, I said, "Look, I'm not a hippie or anything, but like the message that, that this painting is putting across is like happiness and love and color." And I said, "Like, there's so many." things horrid things going on in the world right now and this isn't one of them why concern yourself so much with some paint you know yes 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 what the hell yeah such such a bad use of time and right away um i feel for the people who who built things the the way they did and spent money and time what a waste of paint like just in itself like what a waste of it's all of our resources and it's a tiny fraction of anything compared to some giant business that makes water bottles or anything all i'm saying is i always bring up the water bottle analogy (laughs) like they're a bad company or something because they bring single-use plastics to the world um that's not what this is about and i'm not that solid on on that i just say it (laughs) but what i mean is like all that paint and all the different colors that were just there what a fucking waste just covering them with more paint to make it more nothing like just it's a little it's just a waste yeah waste it of is time. it is it's a waste of energy and you know and it's it as i say if this was like politicians kissing or something like they have on the berlin wall if there was something controversial about this if there were swastikas on it or fucking whatever you know i might understand this quam that they have about like but it's i think it's more like they don't like alex I think they genuinely kind of like say like this guy thinks he could do anything. We'll show him. Man, if you could write a, a poem that shows or like I know you're writing words that are pretty on point and good, like about um, here lies the the happy go lucky mural. Yeah, um, that's pretty good. It, it, even it's good more for a that, joke. It's lit- good for a temporary mural. No, nah, I think literal those words and the the literacy of it just being like this was buried this color yeah rainbows were colored yeah this you killed art <laughs> like you wanted art to go away yeah like because you didn't think it fit in just like the fucking nazis people wanted art and you wanted art to go away you mm. you buried art why does that make you better because you go to work Hmm. I don't, I, yeah. I'll never understand it. I'll never be able to understand that kind of like blind power trip. It's really upsetting. Yeah, it is. That's why I flew over, especially to say, please don't do this. Yeah. Well, I didn't say that. You know, I just compared them to Nazis. I remember. <laughs> I knew they were um, going to do it anyway. I remember. You knew they were going to do it? You didn't think there was any. I didn't think we're like people. Power? W- well, a protest, like they had the. There was a police there. That if we tried to like physically stop people from erecting the scaffolding, like we would have got arrested. I'm sure of it. Tensions were a little bit high at one point, but I mean, it was it was peaceful. That's I even so crazy. Up, they put up like razor wire on the thing. It looks like a concentration camp, and I put a rose on the. I bought a rose and put it on the razor wire to, as a symbol of peaceful protest. Yeah. 
That's so crazy. That's so much for such a small thing. Is it? So much tax money and stuff. And yeah. then now, yeah, you owe the 20000 Bro, what yeah. the fuck? Could you imagine, like, some sort of... Make it gray. That's like me going over to your house and painting over your house and then saying, <laughs> you owe me now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the twisted thing that they're charging them so much money for can, the scaffold. Can you uh, write that in? And then write my name? Because I wrote, I said that. No, but uh, what I mean is... <laughs> Um, you painted over my house and you asked me for money for the paint. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like a, just as many quotes as that. So people can, if they don't understand one, like it takes some certain quotes. I'm not telling you to do anything, but I, uh, I do know that sometimes we don't get it until the right words show up or the right fucking time or the right suffering shows up. And it's, then you finally understand. You can make... Because maybe you don't understand um, the terror of Nazi... Um, like Nazi Germany. Nazi Germany in the way that they... Like how it played out and how it did get the way it was to then compare it to a house. But you all have a house. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. You came and painted over my house and then you asked me to pay for the paint. Here's the thing. Before I even showed up, and I said this to the newspapers as well on the protest day... They didn't like that Alex had the building painted orange. Then they made him take the lettering off the building because they said it was too dangerous that, like, the lettering might fall off and kill people, which was bonkers. He had uh, wooden smiley faces on the building, too, about, like, eight of them. They made him take those off. Even though there's loads of other buildings in the same vicinity of Charlottenburg, and they've got lettering. They didn't attack any of those people. And the way I, I said it to uh, the uh, the people from the, the media that day, I said, it's basically like saying, hey, um, your shirt is blue. I don't like it. Take it off. So you take it off, and then they go, now I don't like that one, the yellow one you have on. You know what I mean? They were yeah. just kicking up a stink before I even got there. And they get money from it. Yeah. Because they have... Uh, and the taxpayers' cash goes towards their basic, basically bullying one man. Yeah. Dom, what, what could we bring up that, like, our individual stories? Or is there anything that you think is really valuable that you think people should know? Or a belief that you roll with that you think other people could think for a while? Wow. What are you working on? Like, and what's the idea that makes you work on it? Like, as a, the human you are, as you walk? Um, I mean, like, look, <laughs> to be honest, like, I would love, it's not like I've ever chased the Yankee dollar. I never have. I, as I say, like, there was a wealth of experience and that was the most important thing to me. But now approaching 50, I'd love to have a bit of stability. I'd love to have a, a bank account that allows me to travel more. And like, I, I'm very fortunate to have this comfortable house, you know, to, to I, I've always come back here, you know, mostly for, for Christmases and stuff, but I've been here since, um, since Australia, you know, apart from holidays to Portugal and that type of thing. So I, I've, I'm very fortunate, but I'd love to be on the road again. I'm biding my time until I can get this going, the 2D design stuff. And, uh, and hopefully then my office will be my laptop no matter where I go in the world. Kind of like my friend Wallace. That's what he does. Like, you know, not clothing, but... Um, that, that's, that's my only hope for now. That and and get back with my ex-banger. <laughs> no, no, no. That and, and, and hopefully, you know, kind of find some peace of mind, I suppose. With getting enough to travel, like, so... You know when we're uh, working towards our goals in our life, and our life is finite? Yeah. Um, and I think about how much more money I would like, but then I think about what I would need to sacrifice to get the money. Yeah. Versus the art and the travel that I can literally do. If I just say, I'm fucking go without money. Yeah. And then you just go. Yeah. Um, creates a different life, creates a different kind of comfort. Yeah. No, less hotels, less nice things, less renting towels, no renting towels, stay and, in a tent by and yourself. I, I, <laughs> I've been pretty happy living on noodles, but having the adventure, you know? So, 
I'm sorry, okay, yeah. No, it's just like uh, I agree with you. Like what what you're talking about is is what what, what we mentioned is like the wealth of experience. The adventure is great, and like how much is finances it? finances doesn't really how like, much is it that you need to air quotes travel like so you can travel and work on your computer? What does the traveling look like to you? What do you need the money for when you travel? I mean, like what are you waiting to go travel again for? For the money, party a little bit. You know, not excessively anymore. Uh, even though that seems really hypocr- hypocritical, <laughs> while I have like yeah, you drink. party a lot for a uh, man your age, I guess. I, <laughs> Maybe, uh, yeah. Ma- like more than me, I guess. Now, in my phase of my life, if I, I could, I if could I be skiing on, on the Alps on acid, like when I'm seventy-five. If I don't get back to what I used to do, with, it's so funny. I actually want to be able to drink beer as much as I could, but it doesn't do me. Like, I'm literally losing my physical health. Like, I'm getting sick each weekend drinking here in Ireland, which is very peculiar. Right. Yeah, for a month and a half. Yeah. Every weekend that I would... And I'm, like, waiting in the week. See, I'm where, cut I'm cut from a certain kind of cloth where I'm kind of... I'm used to binging and going... Dude, like I would have partying hard. two to four beers a night every night other than... Um, and this is... You know, this can actually sound really weird and foreign to other people uh-huh. but for when you're used to it that's what uh that's what it was for uh for me and then on weekends yeah you can have 12 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and <laughs> that's where i was at and i, I just liked uh, how much beer i l- liked i liked the beer i liked the ex- the time yeah and then usually the time with the beer with the people was really incredible uh or so i felt or thought though uh, i would do less work how, how long do you think you're gonna stay in belfast um, until about mid May to late May. Really? Yeah. So you're gonna hopefully come back for the oh, launch. Oh, my apologies. My apologies. April, late, late April. Late April. Yeah. So but I'm you, around. I'm around for launch time. I'm. Will debating. you be? Will you be back? I'm debating. Uh, hopefully, dude. Is like, there an after party? Oh yeah. Can I make one? Yeah, yeah. That well, like, I don't want to. I don't come down to just party, man. I DJing's my party. Well, well, can we uh, fucking make a little after party? Fucking uh, two pounds entry. Why? Why don't we? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Is there like? Are you? When are you guys done? Your. When are you guys done? At what time is the the show done? Your. I mean, your we've said launch. doors at half seven. We'd like people to get there and have a chat with each other if they haven't seen each other in a while, and and then we'll. I think we're gonna play at the acoustic set, aiming to do it around nine, and then about ten o'clock we're gonna kick off the audio visual big presentation oh you know? yeah and i'd say from then if you wanted a dj after that it'd be fucking great yeah well if there's some speakers there right? will be there'll be a pa says two pa systems actually if, if there's yeah like one sub to two subs yeah then there's enough sound to be very influencing with the electronic music there'll easily be volume enough for you and the clarity of of sound quality who would have a problem with it before I get excited about this? No one. Like, so I could pull up and do it. Like, I won't need to do a uh, Bright or a Glorilla set. I would do uh, DJ Super Glue. I'd yeah, Super Glue would be perfect for please it. Please the crowd, you know? Yeah, yeah. And let me run it by James and Greg, the lads yeah. in the band. Yeah. And then from there, we'll suggest it to the uh, the, the, the bar that we're um, playing. Is it Friday or Saturday? It's Saturday, I think. Oh, that's cool. Like, yeah. literally, it's... Saturday, yes. It's Thursday. a way to... It's a very... You know, it's like going to a good club with a good DJ or something. Like, it's... Yeah. And it'd be wonderful if there was, like, you know, a mate of mine, like, DJing after the whole thing. Uh Huh? And yeah. I love the DJ opportunities. I fucking feel so comfortable on stage, man. It's crazy. Although, the only thing I don't feel comfortable with is my excitement in my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm like, always, before I said, I'm like... Holy shit, here we go. All these people, I'm like, oh shit. And then you stand up there, you're like, oh, what's up? Like, here we go. <laughs> but I've done it enough and a lot that I'm like, you just follow the airplane pilot routine of what you know you need to do. Yeah. Yeah, with your art. And then, yeah, I stop myself from getting too excited and just let that energy try to keep cooking the music along properly. Yeah. Try not to get cooking the, Cooking the musical meth. Yeah, don't get intoxicated <laughs> until, like, the end. Yeah, exactly. I was actually thinking that earlier on. Uh, I think on the way to the shop. 
Yeah. I was just thinking that, like, I would try to limit myself to about, like, three Guinness before playing. Like, that's a kind of a, a nice... Yeah. It, it's a nice bit of looseness for playing, but it, you remember all your harmonies and all that kind of thing. Uh, I'd, I'd have a couple of more then for the for the uh, thing because I'd want to see that's not locked with everyone else, but I'd party after that yeah. while you're DJing. Yeah, so it's a way, like if those, your kinds of people who you expect, or it can also attract other people to your show. Yeah. Like if there's a DJ after, yeah, people will... If if it's wanted, like twenty year old crowd, twenty five year old crowd would love to see a DJ. Yeah, and here's the thing: if um if the if the GA club, the GA club in Kill, where we're the bar there, if they're okay with it, and the lads think it's a good idea, I'll actually make a new digital flyer saying, uh, followed by DJ Superglue. Yeah, Canadian then, DJ Superglue. You know, set me a time. Let's keep it on that time if we can. Like. If so, it's going to be 11.30, like, be it 11.30 to 1 or whatever. So you'd or be, be kicking off at 11. Because, like, the, the audio-visual thing, 10 o'clock, it lasts almost an hour. Dude, I'd, I'd love to. And then I can be there and be at the launch. Yeah. And then, But I personally love uh, performing as yeah. well. That's great. Yeah. It's a and great it, idea. Uh, yeah. If it, the only thing... When I only have resistance when, uh, like, if people didn't want to do that, mm -hmm. like, or want to have, you know, like, a, when you go into a venue there's and there's loud music, if people are more like, no, we'd it wouldn't be worth it to have loud music. Like, we'd rather leave and be at another bar. Yeah. But the cool thing is. When it's a DJ that, like, I don't know, people hear about or think is cool, then yeah. you, yeah, you go towards that music. And well, I, I think that, like, you know, kind of having either silence or some shitty radio thing following the the album would be kind of manky. So I'd love there to be some good tunes. And you can, I'll show you a, a WhatsApp that I sent to Corners today, this morning, saying this guy is a fantastic DJ, that we've been listening to his tunes while we're walking and stuff like that, you know? Sure. And uh, um, and, and I told you yesterday while we were walking Luna, um, like, Jesus, like the bass player, I know would love this. Yeah. Because I, uh, I know he's, like, I've sent him songs by Tipper and stuff like that where he's kind of gone, that's deadly. So, um... I wouldn't even, uh, I wouldn't even... So when I roll with DJ Superglue, it's like so much so trying to be like, okay, let me just gain their trust. Yeah. I guess I was trying to talk about this before. As DJ Superglue, when no one knows you, it's like, okay, what will these people know? And yeah. then I'll probably start with like fucking flogging Molly or some shit. <laughs> and then just people are going to expect it to go a certain way. I'll fucking loop it. Yeah. Before yeah. it, yeah, yeah, before yeah, it yeah. does it, the thing that everybody knows already. Yeah. And then I'll bring another track they know. You see, I like, and then I instantly I have them hooked. Drunken monkey, and yeah. then I I've showed them skills. Yeah. They know I'm here and I'm watching them, and they know I'm in control. Yeah. So then everything they can think, everything that is happening is intentional. Yeah. So then when they feel that way, they listen, and then when I do things they like, they love it. Yeah. And then I, it creates an energetic circle. Then I feel them, and then when they don't love it, when I got their attention and I can feel. They don't love it. I'm like, course correct. Right yeah. now, this isn't planned. I gotta yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. That's DJ Super Glue. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I would play my own tune clearly if I if it was the time. Yeah. But those tunes I was showing you, they're pretty dirty. And if it was time for that dirtiness, and then I might be like, jump on the mic, be like, this is one of my own. Like I would only do that when I have their trust and I deserve to play one of my own. And yeah. if it was on the time. But I remember how you played the crowd in, in Prague. You know, I yeah. know that like the way you were doing it, and like I loved your ch choice of like tunes and how you were mixing them. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's very. I love it too, man. I it that this is a fantastic idea. Yeah, directly after this podcast, I'm going to write to the lads and s suggest this. Yeah, see if it can happen. And yeah. then you, uh, we may end up getting a bigger audience. Like in a way, like maybe if you say there's a DJ too and start advertising it, it's, it'll be a good dance. Oh after, damn, Skippy! I'm going to advertise it. I have an, a, an event on Facebook, and I'll, I'll change the flyer and put it up there. So fun. 
deadly man oh god boom <laughs> <laughs> yeah i would love a that'd be my first gig in ireland yeah i think wow I great i don't know if i've played yet in ireland i can't remember yeah if i can be part of making that ha- happen i will sweet yeah. yeah yeah i'd be happy to show up to play um great idea yeah great idea and I know the lads are going to go for this, and I especially know, when I show them some of your tracks. Like at that, yeah, you can show them my tracks or mixes. But yeah. at that time, it's good to have, it's good to have a DJ too, you know. Yeah, or like it's perfect. It's progressing. Yeah, sick. And then after that, we'll have a side trance DJ from three to five. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, if 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 we can, uh, if 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 it's a good time, they'll stay open later because cool. they'll they'll be making it like they're not charging us for for like renting the place for the night or anything like that. Nice. They're just saying, like, we know you're going to bring a crowd and that's going to give us, like, a ton of cash. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a cool That's a cool bar. Yeah. Sometimes they, they want half the... Are you charging door? We are charging door. Yeah. Um, But, the, like, that's going to just, like, go directly towards records and paying 10, 10 euro on the door gets you a digital copy of the album. Tight. Like a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> pay for my bus fare and stuff you know <laughs> um what uh what yeah. a great idea yeah, yeah. i'm stoked with that yeah, sometimes they they take half the door because they know the door is going to be huge but then they also if the door is going to be huge then the bar is going to be huge too yeah but it's mental how the different places work sometimes you just get 10 percent of the bar and they take the door Sometimes they give you flat out cash and and you get all of the door if you're a gangster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, man. Some people would show up to my small hometown, get like twelve hundred dollars up front and all of the door. What? And ten percent of the bar. Jesus. So slick. Yeah. Yeah, but I guess the bar makes fat stacks. And then the door is based on everyone knows this person's really popular and it's like, well, I'm not gonna come to your town if I don't get the door. And it's yeah, like, why yeah, should yeah. you get the door? Like, yeah, they're yeah. coming for me, mm-hmm. uh, the majority, and then some would just be coming to the bar. But, uh, yeah, your bar is going to make tons. Yeah. Yeah, because you know that it always does when I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. Not me in particular. This is someone else that I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, look, no one really knows our music. I mean, like, it's not like we're trying to get signed or be big or anything. We've always, always just created music with each other because we love it. That's the... There's no drive. There's no kind of like desire to be known or anything. Now, I would love if like people heard this after working on it for 13 years. You know, it's a long time to be on one project. It's all about promo. Mm. Yeah. So that's why I'd, I'd, I'd kind of send like um, two of the, the songs uh, to... Um, to various kind of alternative radio stations. I'd love for people to hear it. Um, everything else, it eh, doesn't really matter. Man, I was thinking in the shower uh, this morning, I was thinking about my own promo and stuff, mm-hmm. or yours or something, something to do with music. And you, uh, the connection of understanding how something was written and like why it's so, why why it is so epic like so yeah it took 13 years when you say that like then people might even expect more than what it even is but what i'm saying is like yeah you you really show people give them the story let them watch and see how it was made then they feel like they grow an attachment to the music yeah and then that's when they start like really liking it too now when i say 13 years i mean i was on the road so much it was really difficult for us to uh, record and, and jam and stuff like we did every time I came home uh, we'd started a song jamming we'd continue that maybe we'd record something when I came back next time we'd start mixing it yeah but but I mean you know that's why it took so long is because like I wasn't here to do it enough that's why they they formed a, a, another band the bass player and the the, um, uh, the drummer James and Greg have another band, a folk band called the Savage Jim Breen, who are brilliant in their own right, with two other lads. Um, but yeah, um, it's taken 13 years, but if you c- compiled all the time actually spent recording and mixing, I think Greg did it. And, you know, it's probably about half a year, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
It makes sense. Yeah. 13 years put together. God damn it. Someone please listen to it. It's just spread over bread like too much butter. I know that. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> spread over bread like too much butter. I, I'm sounds old good. Gandalf. Sounds good, man. It sounds like uh, butter cake. <laughs> That's all that Y'all is. Y'all like some butter? Um, releasing music and not advertising it enough and not sharing enough of a story and getting very little plays is destined to happen if you don't share stories and don't advertise. Yeah, that's my yeah, yeah. that's my doing. Yeah. Yeah. The music yeah, itself. I would like to like push it a little bit. Greg asked that. He said like, "Do we want to push this? Do we want like to people to hear it or just going to release it and whoever picks it up well and good?" The music itself. What the fuck is it? What does it even mean to anyone? Nothing until like unless the vibrate the vibrations through the air are so sonically pleasing to some people, which they are, and that'll never change to some people. Yeah. Uh-huh. But not not ever like a majority, to my understanding, of the people in the world. It is once you have an understanding of who they are or what it is. Like so when you hear a song and then someone just says, you know, Phil Collins wrote this song to the guy, uh, invited the guy who he watched drown somebody. Right. Now, every time I hear that song, I fucking love that song. It's a dope song, and we share that story. Like, Mm -hmm. And it's a fucking way more mental song than... When I hear your music, it's totally finely mixed, and it is full. Yeah. It's just understanding the culture and who you guys are and what you're about. Yeah. would make me like it more. Yeah. Because sonically, it's not something I'm used to, so I don't... I know that. Yeah. I'm, it's not attractive to me. Yeah. I'm proud of it because it's yours. Yeah. But, uh... I mean, like, that's the beauty about music and, and all of art. It's all subjective, you know? I mean, not... Like, I know that there are people going to turn up with this, like the guy I met at the shop today. Um... I don't imagine that will be his type of music. Just, I know that by the way he dresses. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I don't expect everyone to kind of go, wow, what a deadly album. Now, people are going to be nice and they're going to say that regardless. But I mean, I at least want them to hear this thing start to finish loud for at least once. That's the way to make people want to hear it again. Yeah. That's the way. That's where my best sales or my best influence for people happens is when it's actually coming through clearly, sonically. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if sonic's the right word. I'm just going to say through sound, through the air. Yeah. When I'm performing, it just is my best way of advertising myself compared to the social medias and yeah. genres. I don't have them. I am myself. And then when you hear me... I have an energy that I try to give and yeah. try to make for you. Yeah. Based on my experience on dance floors that um it sells it sells itself or something or what am I saying? I'm saying that it uh, must be a, an amazing feeling to see people dancing to what you're putting out cuz like well, that doesn't happen it never happens at gigs. For, what I meant to say is yeah. it Ah, shit, I lost it again. <laughs> I'm going to go it, for a quick whiz. I think uh, we're wrapping up. Are we wrapping up? Yeah. Yeah, it That's... seems like a, a nice way to end, like talking about maybe, you know, playing music on the same night. <laughs> yeah, and um, thanks for having me over. And Dude, a pleasure. Love everybody, and thanks for listening. And I you got anything... 2D Designs. 2D Designs. Hopefully a soft launch this month. Aiming to soft launch. And uh, we'll have a hard launch for, for summer. And then I'll be actually kind of... Uh, I'll be shouting it to the world then. I'll be trying to say it to as many people as possible. Like that this this thing exists. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, oh, I thought you meant the the album launch. Oh, well. the album launch. Yeah. And so of yeah. this month? Cor- corners end of this month. Yeah. In uh, fucking Johnstown? In, in Kill. In Kill. Kill Ga. Yeah. Oh my 30th God. 30th of March. Half seven. Kickoff. Get drunk as Dom. Get drunk as me in 2005. <laughs> Thanks guys. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, dude. Fucking I. That was way better than Friday's podcast, dude. Sure was. It was. It was way better.